again. Welcome to the AKO kickoff pregame show. My name is Dominic Papa. We're coming to you from the Windsor Stadium, the site of week number four of the Ontario Football Conference action between the Windsor AKO Fratman and the London Beefeaters. Of course, this is game number three for the AKO Fratman. They come in with a one and one record. They win last week against Ottawa to get into the win column, a 37-24 victory. Come from behind victory. A nice win for Mike Lachance and the gang. As always, joining us on the show are our OFC football analysts, a couple of great guys, a couple of great guys to talk football with. Of course, back on the set with us here at the uh, studio is Adam Morrison and also Joel Manerick. And welcome to the broadcast again, guys. And, you know, we were talking before we went on air here, the weather conditions, a big difference. Uh, it's cooled off nicely here uh, down in the Windsor Essex County area. And uh, it really is an ideal night for football. You don't have to worry about heat or anything. They had a nice rain this morning. The field's in excellent condition. Uh, this is a pretty easy game to get ready for, isn't it? A absolutely. I mean, from the player's perspective, it, uh, it allows you, I think, to be in a little bit better mindset, to put a little bit more out there, knowing that heat's not going to be a factor, weather's not going to be a factor, and really that it's just all football tonight. It's mm -hmm. all talent tonight. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Joe? Uh, do you, your, your game plan doesn't change, I guess, from week to week. I mean, maybe if you had a slick field, you, you might alter a couple of things here and there. But uh, for the most part, it's all systems go. Yeah, here. for the most part, you're going to do what you do and mm -hmm. do what you do best. And, mm -hmm. and that's what it's going to be all about tonight and see uh, see who executes the, the better. What it comes down to here, though, one of the factors coming into the night, uh, the game tonight, both these teams come in one and one guys. But London had a bye week, I believe. Or, yeah, no, they did have a bye week. So they're coming in. But maybe a little fresher, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> these are young men that should be in pretty good shape. Uh, does that factor in at all? I think it's still early in the season, that whether you had the bye week or you, d you don't. It's uh, you know just a matter of continuing to work on what you've done in training camp mm -hmm. through your first couple of games. So I don't think the bye week is going to be a pro or a negative for them. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Adam? Yeah, Joe, I'd have to agree th with that as well. I mean, uh, coming to this scene, it's still very early in the season. We see we're all y they're all young men out there. They mm -hmm. should still be fresh, but uh, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't hurt when you're doing a to trying to regroup, take a look at film, things like that, insertion, things like that. It doesn't hurt, but I don't think it should be a factor coming into today. The Fratman came back last week against the Ottawa Sooners. I thought this was a game. Uh, a couple of things needed to happen, and it did finally for the guys uh, on the field. Of course, they get their first offensive touchdown, which I think is going to hopefully carry over into uh, this week. But more importantly, the way they came back and won, how much can you build off of that and, and, and the way they came back and won? Well, I think that you, you have to. You have to build off that. You have to take the things from it that you did well as a football team. Uh, you have to take a look at what were your momentum tippers, and we talked about that last week. It's a big difference. You could feel it. So, again, uh, from – from a, a team perspective, it's really it's just it's time to put all that together, what you've examined, what you've taken back, and really just put it on the field tonight. Did you see things last week, Joe, that Coach Lachance could build on and, and maybe even things now that he might even want to push a little more for? Yeah, I think so for sure. After the first eight quarters of their season or, or six quarters of football that they played in the first, uh, first two games, they, they kind of struggled to find that consistency. And I think in that fourth quarter, they, they kind of really found it. After that Jake Nicoletti interception return for a touchdown, set everything up, the offense case started to roll. I think everything from that point on really started to, to roll, and hopefully it'll snowball through mm -hmm. until tonight. And you alluded to Jake Nicoletti, the defense, the AQ defense, really. Let's face it, guys, the first two weeks, they've been the, I guess, the uh, heart and soul of the team, fair to say that. Uh, maybe really what's carrying the club right now. And, of course, uh, all coaches, I'm sure you guys, even in your coaching days, want to see a balance. You know, you want your specialty teams to do their thing, the offense to do theirs, defense to do theirs. Very important, I think, for AQ here tonight to get co contributions at all levels. I think it's important that the defense plays this, the same consistency that they have. Mm -hmm. They bring the same energy. But like you're saying, is it's time for the offense to be able to feed off that or hopefully you know, begin to drive that initially. It shouldn't be up to the defense all the time to create that momentum. So I'm looking for AKO to come out strong on offense today. And at the beginning of the season, the defense is usually always further ahead than the offense. Uh, not having an exhibition game to be able to kind of get through their, those kinks. And you know, I think we're seeing that in those first two games. And, and in that fourth quarter, we talked about the, the offense came alive, and that's what the potential is from this offense, what we saw in that fourth mm -hmm. quarter. This rivalry goes back, and we'll get more into it as we get into our kickoff pregame show, and uh, Becca Luden will be on in just a moment uh, with her getting uh, some talk with the coaches. But this rivalry, this London-Windsor rivalry, where would you rate it uh, in, in the OFC? You guys both smile when I <laughs> ask that question. Okay, <laughs> so there's so there's no need to really uh, you know talk about it. It's there. Yeah, for me it was uh, it was definitely that it was the first uh, game I looked on the schedule for. Because yeah. uh, again, being so close to us, you have a lot of friends that you've played with. 
uh, both, you know, with uh, travel in the summer and, uh, you know, even again, it's high school, people that went to play college there as well. So uh, you knew a lot of people and it was never, uh, I would say, lack of uh, momentum or is there aggression ready to play for that game. So, mm-hmm. yeah, and regardless of what sport it is, that, that London wins rivalry is there and it's fierce. It's ugly and nasty. We just don't like London, but uh, they are a great sports town, much like Windsor, so uh, should be an interesting one here tonight. Uh, of course, I just mentioned uh, Rebecca Loon. Uh, Becca's uh, working the sidelines again for us tonight, and she has uh, – no, we're not going to go to her just yet. Uh, we're going to try to get a hold of the coaches and get them involved and get their comments and thoughts about uh, tonight's game. Becca is ready, they tell me, so let's uh, throw it out to the field and uh, Rebecca Loon. I'm here with John Vuvalidis, the head coach of the London Beefeaters. Now, last week you had a pretty good game, took home the win over GTA Grizzlies. Now, what do you need to do this week in order to take home the win again? Oh, we just we got to play complete game, offense, defense, special teams, because uh, Windsor AKO is just a great team, and, and especially playing at home, they're they're tough to beat. All right. And now you do have a big rivalry with Windsor AKO. So how do you think that rivalry will come into play tonight? Uh, I think it's just it's just a hard-fought football game. Both teams uh, both teams are well coached, I think, and and both teams just come to play, and it's just hard-nosed football. All right. Now Windsor AKO, you've seen the game tape on them. Slow start last week for them, but a comeback win. So what are you expecting from them tonight? I think they're just really well balanced. I, they 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 will run the ball. Uh, and they run the ball really well. You know, they have an, uh, an incredible offensive line. And I think, you know, when they when they throw the ball, they throw the ball very well as uh, as well. And their special teams are, are, are really sound. Yep. All right. Thanks, Coach. Okay. Have a great game. Thank you. That's it here on the field. So we'll send it back to the studio with Dom. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Becca. And uh, thanks a lot, uh, Coach uh, Vuvalidis. Uh, I mean, you talk about the rivalry again. He, he knows what it's all about. He's been a part of it. And uh, some of the things that he was saying about his team, obviously he has a lot of respect for this AKO team, and he's done his homework. Uh, he knows how deep this lineup really can be. You throw out this one-on-one one record, it's, it's too early, I think, guys, to really put a stamp on where AKO is going to be at, maybe even where London's going to be at. Uh, so I think uh, what Coach Vuvalidis had to say there was, I mean, pretty fair and accurate. Yeah, I think it's just right on point. Uh, you know, always when you're playing an opponent, you want to give them the utmost respect when you're coming into the game, but know full well that you expect to beat them when, you, when you're playing against them. So I think that's what we see from Coach Google Leeds there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, sorry, you can also just see some keys that he's pulled out of that, uh, that as well, watching the tape, you know, talking about the offensive line and some of their strength as well. So I'm sure he's done some, uh, some uh, strategizing on his own to be able to, mm-hmm. to counter that. What does London bring to the table, guys, uh, that you can see offhand, uh, knowing some of the players and things like that, and maybe even knowing Coach Vuvalidis and his style? I know you're somewhat familiar with him, Joe. What do, does he bring to the table? I mean, they, they, their quarterback position is sound. They've got two guys that can really sling the ball and, and can manage a game. They have a good running back in, in uh, Dwayne Stewart. He's a, he's a power back that's got some speed. Uh, so they were a little bit thin on the offensive line earlier in the year. So wondering if they may have gotten a few cuts from uh, from Western and uh, sent some guys down to play for the be- the beef eaters. And if that's the case, they're going to be even stronger for it. Yeah, and that's, a, that's interesting you bring that up, uh, Joe, and it's a good point because uh, Western's become uh, involved with this program and we've uh, witnessed for the last couple of years where they have sent players, even some of their coaching staff uh, have been part of uh, this uh, London Beef Feeder team. And what a nice uh, two-way street to have there for Coach Greg Marshall and the, and the Mustangs to send some of his younger players, perhaps that wouldn't get any playing time. He's going to get some playing time here. He keeps them close to home and uh, keeps an eye on them. But just the same, some players getting a chance to go back up to Western and playing some great uh, CIS football. I mean, it's a nice uh, connection to have, isn't it? Absolutely it is. Uh, you know, for the players that, uh, you know, that don't necessarily get the playing time at Western, to come back and get the reps. Uh, there's one thing with practice. There's one thing with watching film. But getting reps, I think, is key. And with these guys getting that opportunity, again, like you said, staying close to home, not having to go anywhere, having the opportunity to come back up to Western if necessary. But uh, I think it's going to be a great relationship for them going forward. All right, good stuff, guys. Uh, matching wits with uh, Coach Vuvalidis, of course, is the uh, head coach of the Windsor AKO Fratman. Uh, does a great job himself. So we're going to go back out to the field, and that's where Becca Luden has head coach Mike Lachance. I'm here with head coach of the AKO Windsor Fratman, Mike Lachance. So last week, not a pretty win, but still a win. So how do you expect or what do you expect from the guys this weekend after last weekend well you know what we had a good week of practice and you never prepare and hope to play like you did last week on offense but you know what it happens but when you can come over with a win and not play well it's usually the sign of a good team and we do have a good team we're very talented now if we can put execution with talent and combine those two things we're going to be very good now they london does have a big receiving core so how do you 
What are your plans to counter that? Well, we're an aggressive defense. We're going to play a lot of man coverage, and um, uh, we'll get to the quarterback quick. He's a smaller quarterback, so we're going to get some hands up in his face and hopefully he throws a little bit inaccurate. If you throw some inaccurate balls, we're capable, like we showed last weekend, the first week of intercepting passes and, and putting points on the board defensively. So. And now you've seen the game tape from both weeks for London. They had a slow start in Ottawa. Couldn't make out the win that, that week. But last week, their win over GTA, they managed to shut out the Grizzlies in the second half. So what are your expectations from them tonight? You don't get much out of the GTA game. They play kind of a, an odd offense, so it's, it's hard to tell what's really happening in the game with GTA, the way that they play. It kind of throws you off a bit. You get more of a barometer of what they did against Ottawa, and I thought they had their moments against Ottawa where they dominated. Now they shot themselves in the foot similar to what we did. Um, so it's uh, going to be the tale of uh, who executes the best because they're very talented. they got a great coaching staff. We respect the heck out of this team, so it's going to be a good one. All right, and are you feeling a win tonight for the frat? I always feel a win. I'm a pretty positive guy. If I came here feeling a loss, I think I wouldn't come. So. <laughs> All right, <laughs> thank you. Have a good game. That's everything from down here on the field with the coaches. Now let's send it back for the rest of the post-game show with the guys in the studio. Thanks a lot, Becca. Good stuff. Uh, we look forward to your work uh, this evening during our broadcast. Uh, of course, we talk about the rivalry, the history between London and Windsor. Uh, these two teams have met on uh, numerous occasions. Here's the last 10 meetings, how it breaks down. They usually play each other twice a season. So it's uh, the last five years or so that uh, they've had these 10 meetings. Uh, you see it's uh, pretty, uh, pretty even, uh, at five and five. Uh, they've outscored, the Fratman have outscored London handily. Uh, but still that five and five record is what you, really stands out there. Of course, last year they met uh, on October 5th and it was one, London winning by a touchdown. Uh, and then uh, it was the uh, Fratman winning uh, the uh, next game, of course, uh, in that uh, second meeting of the season. And uh, that uh, was a 24-7 outcome in that other game. So uh, pretty even split, guys. Uh, both these teams one and one. Uh, does does any one team have an edge going into tonight? I think the edge has to determine uh, based on what the, the game plan is and what they're going to execute out there. I mean, uh, you know, each one has strengths and advantages. Uh, if we're going to look at, uh, you know, AKO, I think the key for them is going to be really to leverage that offensive line. I mean, the uh, London coach had talked about, uh, you know, the, the veteran and the size of that offensive mm -hmm. line. You saw in the last uh, part of the game, uh, the fourth quarter where they had some success, success in running the ball inside. So sticking to what they do well, mixing the pass in there, getting some short passes quick, I think would be the keys for AKO today. What do you see as uh, advantages, Joe? Uh, advantages, I think, being on that roll that AKO got on mm -hmm. that fourth quarter. I think if they need if they need to come out strong in the, in the first quarter here, and then they can ride that through into a victory tonight. All right, good stuff. We're going to take a time out here on the uh, kickoff pregame show. When we come back, we're going to uh, update the uh, league standings. We'll go through that for you. We'll also take a look at the out-of-town games, uh, two other contests going on in the Ontario Football Conference. We'll let you know who's playing, and we'll get you set for the kickoff here. It's the AKO Fratman hosting the London Beef Eaters. We'll have all the action for you in just a few minutes. You're watching the AKO Kickoff Pregame Show on we-tv.ca. Sir, where are you coming from? I was just at a buddy's watching the game. Have you consumed any alcohol tonight? I had a couple of beers. Thanks. Can I ask you to step out of the vehicle, please? How many drinks does it take to impair your ability to drive safely? Having even just a few casual drinks can impair your driving ability to the point that you could lose your license for at least three days or more. Hi, honey. Can you come pick me up? Play it safe with alcohol. If you plan on drinking, don't plan on driving. Welcome back to the Windsor Stadium, the AKO kickoff pregame show. Dominic Papa along with Adam Morrison and also Joel Manerick, our OFC football analyst. We're getting set for action between the Windsor AKO Fratman and the London Beefeaters. The first meeting of the season between these uh, two teams. Uh, and of course, both these teams come into tonight's game with a one and one record. The Fratman coming off a win last week over the Ottawa Sooners, 37-24. Speaking of numbers, let's take a look at the OFC standings and uh, see how it all shapes up right now. The Hamilton Hurricanes, you guys, uh, 
they're making a statement early on. They've got 107 points for in three games. So they're obviously uh, putting the offensive numbers up, but uh, also as well, just uh, 32 points surrendered in three games. The early favorites. I mean, you don't win championships in September, Joe, but it's nice to get out to a 3-0 start. You know, every anytime you get out to a 3-0 start, you, you set yourself up for success in the rest of the season and, and setting yourself up for home field advantage throughout. So that's what they're fighting for. Yeah. Uh, if we can get those back up, Steve, our, our, our standings, uh, if we can just hold them up there for a quick second, let our uh, viewers at home. Uh, again, then you look at the, the middle part there. you got Burlington, London, Ottawa, uh, the Predators, and the A-Kill Fratman, all 1-1. One one. Uh, again, huge game tonight between uh, the Fratman and the B-Feeders. Uh, can go a long way when it comes down to the uh, playoff uh, jockeying uh, for positions. Uh, but uh, again, you look at uh, some of the numbers here. Burlington, interesting, uh, one and one. Uh, they've only scored 46 points, and they've given up 57, but yet they're one and one. One of those kind of deceiving stats, I would imagine. Well, absolutely. I mean, you know, you can take a look at any stat there is, but uh, it all comes down to the win and loss column, right? So winning by one or winning by 20, it really mm -hmm. doesn't matter. And you look at Twin City, the Twin City Predators in that, that loop there, one and one. They have 11 points for, and they have a victory. So what does that tell you guys? <laughs> It's, it's all about who you play, right? Yeah, so well, uh, GTA. Yeah, GTA. Absolutely, and they're going to be struggling throughout this yeah, season, yeah. the GTA. So, uh, you know, with only four, four teams making the playoffs, mm -hmm. it's crucial that uh, AKL gets us win tonight mm -hmm. because, again, now gives them a tiebreaker against London. They have the tiebreaker against Ottawa. Yeah, GTA, of course, as you saw there with our standings, uh, they're 0-3, 36 points for, 63 against. So they're struggling on uh, both sides of the ball right now. And speaking of GTA, that'll be the Fratman's opponent next week on the road. So... Uh, you look at that game, that's a winnable game for the Fratman, but they got to take care of business here at home first. Speaking of other games, uh, there are two other games in the OFC tonight. The one other game that I really like uh, tonight, gentlemen, is that uh, Ottawa Sooner-Hamilton game. Uh, that's a huge game. I know Hamilton, we just talked about them being 3-0. and It's at Hamilton. Uh, Ottawa's got to be a little bit desperate, and you wonder how banged up they're going to be. We saw a number of those Sooner players last week, guys, being helped off the field. A couple of them didn't return, so... Uh, it's a big game for the Sooners, though, uh, you know, against a 3-0 and Hamilton team. I'm going to go with Hamilton in that game. I'll be the homer on this one. What do you guys think? I, I would agree with that as well, with Hamilton being right now sh showing that they're the class of the league. And so until they get knocked off, I think they'd, they'd be uh, favored in every, every game that they play. And I'm going to go half, put uh, three check marks for uh, Hamilton there. But, uh, you know, if Ottawa comes out anything like they did the first half against AKO, it could be an interesting game. I definitely look forward to seeing some highlights of that game as well. Yeah, okay. The other game had Twin Cities uh, taking on Burlington uh, in uh, Burlington uh, tonight. And, again, both those teams are one and one. Uh, I've always liked Burlington. Uh, they've been one of those traditional uh, solid organizations for the Ontario Football Conference. We talked about Twin Cities last week on the pregame show, guys, where we said, is this the year that they actually make a mark into the OFC and, and get something going? They have a victory. They are 1-1. One one. Uh, what do you see happening in Burlington? Again, uh, you know what? They've only got 11 points for, but their defense seems to be okay there with uh, tw tw Twin Cities. Well, for myself, I'm actually, uh, you know, having a chance to look at a few games. I'm actually going to uh, put my uh, nod over to the Twin Cities there. You know, this is going to be the week with so many teams at that one-on-one -on -one in the middle there. This is going to be the week where you make that division, and uh, I'm going to put a win out in their column. Oh, that's a gutsy call. I like it. And I'm going to go with Burlington. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with the tried and true. Yeah. They've been in the UFC for a while. They know how to play the game. They know where they're at. It's a, it sets up a big game for down the road if Burlington wins against Twin Cities uh, between uh, Windsor AKO and Burlington down the road. Yeah, point. absolutely. Uh, of course, I'm going to take uh, Burlington there as well. So, Adam, you're on your own on that one, buddy. Sorry about your luck. But I, I give you credit for uh, sticking your neck out. Hey, uh, I'm okay with that. Yeah, it's okay. You're a big boy. You can handle it, that's for sure. Uh, so we're uh, going to uh, call it a show here, the AKO kickoff uh, pregame show. Uh, I didn't even ask you guys, though. I need a prediction for tonight's game. Should I go there? Do I go there? Well, I think sure. we go okay, there. Okay, I want one. So why not? I guess I'll start it. I think it's going to be Windsor AKO 27, Burlington 17. Or sorry, oh, London 17. Okay, 27-17. Well, again, we're going to have to go with the hometown team yeah. here, but uh, I'm actually going to go 34-17. Uh, so you see that offense may kick in gear a little bit here, okay? I think I have to. All right, good stuff. I like uh, I like AKO tonight as well. Uh, I think uh, coming off a huge victory last week, uh, the way they won uh, will carry some of that momentum over here. I'm going to I'm going to go with at least uh, 32 for the uh, Fratman, and I'm going to say maybe a 20 for the uh, London. Uh, beef eater. So we're going Homer route uh, this week, guys, but th that's okay. We're allowed to. Uh, Joe, thanks for your help. Adam, always thanks for your help. Oh, we'll see you guys at halftime uh, for your analysts of uh, tonight's game. Uh, don't touch anything. We're going to be right back here on uh, we-tv.ca. We'll have the opening kickoff for you and all the live action 
right here between the Windsor A. Kill Fratman and the London Bee Feeders. Until then, this is Dominic Papa wishing you a great night. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you all again very soon. Good evening and welcome to the Windsor Stadium site of Ontario Junior Football Conference action here on we-tv.ca. It's the London Bee Feeders taking on the Windsor AKO Fratman. Good evening everybody, my name is Dominic Papa. Joining me in the broadcast booth, our OFC analyst does a great job, Mr. Badia Quas. Also joining us on the sidelines, Becca Luden. And in studio, Adam Morrison and Joel Manerick. So a great crew here to bring you all the action here at the Windsor Stadium. With the, a nice matchup. Good to see you again. We look forward to your work here this evening. Uh, but uh, you have the one and one Fratman taking on the one and one London Bee Feeders. We do, and both of these teams are going to look at this game as an opportunity for them to get home field for at least one round, if not the entire playoffs. And while we got a second, you'll see all the referees on the sideline there with their numbers to you. I can give you a quick introduction of those. Uh, you have number 19, referee Jay Schroeder, and you'll notice he'll have the white hat on. Number four is John McDonald. He'll be your umpire. Next is your field judge, number eight, Brent Webster. And you have your head linesman, Alex Jemmy, number 74. You have your side judge, number 73, John Dodson. Joe Cooper will serve as your back judge, number nine. And Neil DeBacker will be your line judge, number 23. Good stuff, good officiating crew. We also have Becca Luden on the sidelines. Let's see what she has introducing her for the evening and bringing us some good information. Good evening to you, Rebecca. And we're here back at Windsor Stadium as the AKO Fratman hosts the London Bee Feeders in another beautiful evening here in Windsor, Ontario. A mo moments before the game, we had a moment of silence for a former AKO family member, John DiNapoli. We'll have his daughters after the first quarter here with me on the sidelines. As for AKO after last weekend, a couple of injuries on the list. Quarterback Drake Sunderland is out with a concussion. Tommy Hose with his knee. Nick Kotsalidis with an elbow and Zayed Al Sayed with a calf injury. As for London Bee Feeders, all looking healthy, although a younger team, so we're set for a pretty nice matchup tonight. I'll send it back up to Dom in the booth for the first quarter. Thanks a lot, Becca, and a couple of key injuries for the Fratman, but I know uh, they, that uh, Coach Lachance has gone to both quarterbacks, obviously Sunderland, as Becca just mentioned, out of the game tonight, so it really, uh, the, the pressure really falls onto the shoulders of Austin Lumley. He finished very nice last, nicely last week. He's going to have to pick up where he left off. Absolutely, and if I were Coach Lachance, the one thing I would do to try to deflect some of that pressure off of Austin is rely heavily on that veteran offensive line. The older guys hand the ball off, settle him in a little bit, use some play action to really take some of the pressure off of him and allow him to do what he does best, which is run and make plays. Of course, London had a bye week last week, uh, Badi. We talked about that on our pregame show with Joe and Adam. Uh, that's probably one of the reasons why they are very healthy coming into tonight. And if you're Coach Vuvalatis, I mean, obviously you want to take advantage of that and really get out to a good quick start here. Unquestionably. A bye week after your first couple games isn't necessarily a bad thing. It gives you time to reinstall and refocus some things on offense. It allows you to get a little bit more physical from a tackling perspective on defense. And then you can take a week off, so to speak, in terms of we don't have to amp it up leading up and go healthy into the game with some real good uh, game prep leading into this game, which, as it appears, they are relatively healthy and they are ready to play. All right, good stuff. We're going to take a quick timeout when we come back. It's the opening kick and the call. You're watching OFC Football on we-tv.ca. Adding new products or services to your brochure? Updating those drab business cards. 
or looking to create a striking window display in need of some screen printed signs for that construction site or promotional campaign posters vehicle wraps and a whole lot more at Angel Star Digital, our expert design and production team are ready to meet all your promotional needs. For samples of our work, check out our website at www.angelstardigital.com or you can call us at 519-969-0712. That's 519-969-0712. And we are set for the opening kickoff. The Akil Fratman kicking off to the London Bee Feeders. Dominic Papa, Badia Quas, the entire hardworking crew here at we-tv.ca bringing you week number four of the OFC schedule. And this sun, I'll tell you what, there's a nice bright sun and it's gonna work against the Fratman right now. They'll have the sun looking right into their eyes. It's to the back of the Bee Feeders. Taking that kickoff was number 34, Simon Clark. He's from Parkside Collegiate, 5'7", 183 pounds, a 21-year-old. London starts scrimmage, first and 10. It looks like at their own 20, uh, looks like the 28, Badi. It sure does. And this sun might also play a factor against London in that the receivers now have to look back towards the line of scrimmage, which is back into Good point. the sun. Good point, Badi. Quarterback is number seven, Colin Drennan. And he goes right to the air, and nobody really in the area. A couple of AKO players, but uh, maybe a little miscommunication there. Yeah, something went a little bit wrong. Both players were just sort of in a, a, a light jog, working their way up the outside and inside seam, and no one really made a violent push up the field, yet the quarterback tried to throw the ball over the top. Just underway nicely here. A beautiful night for OFC football. And certainly we're glad to be bringing the action here on we-tv.ca. Expecting another outsiding contest here this evening, much like last week with the Ottawa Sooners. Second and 10 for the Bee Feeders. Couple steps back by Drennan. He pumps and he gets wrapped up and he's gonna go for a loss. Wilkinson Dalton. Dalton Wilkinson, I should say, with the sack. And that is something that has been lacking, and I know that Coach Morenci has really been trying to get on his defensive line to get some more pressure in. Dalton Wilkinson is one of the overagers taking advantage of the new rule change, and I've known Dalton for some time. He played for me at Essex High School, and a tremendous young man, a super kid, and he made a nice bull rush and was able to get to the quarterback, forcing an early punting situation for the Bee Feeders. So two and out for the Bee Feeders. Their punter, number two, Matt Wolf, stands at about his five yard line. So AKO possibly with some good field position here. Left footer, and this is going to be handled by number 27, Seamus Neary. He's forced out of bounds, but as mentioned, AKO should have decent field position. Looks like they're gonna spot it at about the Fratman 47 yard line. Take another look at the uh, sack here. Uh, go ahead, Buddy. And you'll see on the replay that you get big number 40 who broke through the line of scrimmage, wrapped up the quarterback, but with protection of the quarterback, notice he didn't drive him or throw him into the ground. It was a continuation of the tackle. Mm -hmm. Player safety is of utmost concern mm -hmm. and uh, they're definitely gonna be looking for that. Uh, that's the kind of football you like to see, Buddy. Nice hard hitting, clean, wrapped him up nicely as you mentioned and uh, really didn't push the envelope in any way. And as you'll see on the first play for the Fratman, just very basic, an inside zone running play. I know Coach LaShawn said the focus is going to be on first down. And you see about four and a half yard gain. Second and six is manageable. You can call anything in your playbook from a vertical route to something underneath, back to the run, any kind of play action. It's a good situation to be in. Brandon Donkers with that last carry. They're gonna say second and six yards to go here for the Fratman. Lumley, high snap, handles it nicely to Donkers. Donkers breaks a tackle, then picks up the first down on the second effort across the 50 down to about the 48 of the Bee Feeders. Yeah, and I, again, like I had mentioned earlier, they want to be able to settle Austin Lumley down, and you give two hand balls to the handoff to running back, and next thing you know, you pick up 13 yards total, you move into the Bee Feeder territory, and you've already got a first down early in the game, which didn't happen last week this early in the game. Yeah, well, maybe the offense picking up where they left off last week, Badi. That would be a good sign for the Fratman. Nice shoestring tackle there by the Beefeaters' Wasim Gozel, the linebacker, number 40. 
Yeah, I believe that young man is actually a local product. Uh, I believe he went yes, to Kennedy, Windsor which Kennedy. is just Windsor around Kennedy, the, right, just to the north of the stadium here. And it's one of those uh, things that you wish he could have stayed home. Young man made a nice tackle. It was a simple little counter play. They missed first spot linebacker, which you pretty much have to account for. Had they made that, there was some real green grass for him. They give the Fratman two yards on that last play. Here's Lumley's first pass, and it's picked off. The bee feeders take over the ball. It was number 39, Isaiah Ngana, and he comes up with the INT. Yeah, it was, e I'm not exactly sure what the row combination was supposed to be because the receivers did not seem to be in that general area. The ball was thrown more to the inside part where the numbers are, and the receiver kept it wider to the sideline. So I'm not sure who to put the blame on, but you'll see here in the replay that Austin just pretty much turned and he threw it. And I think he was expecting a receiver at a certain spot and the receiver wasn't there. The only person there was the beef eater defender. Stefan Russo was in the neighborhood, number five for the Fratman. But London takes over the ball, first and 10 at their own 48. Hand off and nothing much there. Maybe a yard for the beef eaters. A late flag after the play. Late flag on the play. And we're gonna get some rough play. I'm not sure who it's going to be against. I saw some hands up into the face. It, it probably is going to be some sort of illegal contact to the head and the referees are always advised to look at that. And it's definitely one of those situations that they wanna nip early. And as it turns out, it looks like they might be signaling one each way, yep. which will wash it. So it is going to be a wash by the looks of it. And we just heard from one of the referees at field level that they did call one on each way. Yep. So it's gonna bring down second down and about the full 10, that was a good force unit tackle. There was about three Fratman jerseys wrapping up the ball carrier there. And you see Mr. Schroeder indicating that it is rough play both ways, which sometimes is a good thing. You call that early and you tell them, guys, we're gonna keep this tight. We're not gonna put up with anything early. Mm -hmm. You take command of the game early. And now the players know, all right, we've sort of tested the boundary. Now we have to really be disciplined. The more disciplined team will win this game. As Badi mentioned, looks like uh, they're going to keep it at about second and 10 here. So nothing gained in that first play for the uh, bee feeders after the turnover. Drennan goes into the shotgun. A quick handoff here to, looks like Nick Morissette, but he's going to go for a big loss. Again, no fool in that Fratman defense. Yeah, it was a read option, but I'm not exactly sure what the quarterback was reading because there was a host of Fratman there. I thought, they might, have have, I thought they might have been in the London Bee Feeder huddle that time. They, they could very they well have been. Full. But you do have to consider, you got a veteran group on the defensive force unit for the Fratman going against a, a little bit of a younger squad up front for the Bee Feeders. Something we'll have to see as the game develops if the London offensive line can sure up their protection and their blocking schemes. So again, uh, the bee feeders unable to move the ball. The Fratman defense looking very solid so far early on here. Neary's gonna take the punt, turns right up, straight up the gut, and a nice return there by Seamus Neary, number 27. Uh, he gets right, uh, they're gonna say right at the 55 yard line, right the midfield strike. First and 10 for the Fratman, 10.26 to go here in the first quarter. We're still scoreless between the Fratman and the bee feeders. Both these teams looking for victory number two in the OFC campaign. And as Badi mentioned earlier at the top of the broadcast, this win for one of these teams could go a long way come uh, time for the playoffs. If they get into the playoffs, could mean a home field advantage. Absolutely. High snap, Lumley handles it, brings it down, hands off to Donkers, and he picks up about four. A timing play like a power roll, you want the running back to be able to hit that full speed right off the blocking of your pulling guard and because of the high snap it was delayed a little bit and they only picked up four yards which is still a positive it's second and medium which is always a good situation but i bet you if the timing would have been there the back suit pursuit might not have gone to the ball carrier as easily second and six for the fratman as they look to keep this drive alive and here's McCann with the carry. We saw him pull off a couple of good runs last week and he pulls off one there. A nice first down for the Fratman and they're all the way down to the London 30 yard line. 
and you do get another first down and another running first down, and it's just an inside trap, and Cody runs that trap, as you saw last week, exceptionally well. Picks up big chunk yardage there and puts the Fratman well within shots field goal range. Cody McCann doing a nice job on the ground. Fratman on the move. First and 10 from the Beef Eaters 30. Hand off by Lumley as he gives it to number eight, Curtis Holmes, who was coming through the right side, and Holmes picks up several yards. Coach Lachance did tell me, and you will see a flag on the field yeah, right now, and it probably is going to be going against the Beef Eaters because it looks like that they were maybe chirping or there was some late push or something after the play. The indication coming from... Actually, it's going to be against the Fratman, Biddy. Because they're march marching the ball back. And that is going to be a down foul as well. It's a post possession. So the play is going to stand. They picked up whatever yards, but the walk off backs them up. And it's going to be second down and 13. And that is an undisciplined penalty. That's yeah. going to hurt them because they, yeah. they had a really good run on the jet sweep. They had second down and short. And I know... Or and I know Coach Lachance wanted to get Holmes into the ball game earlier. He said, look out for this kid. He is a playmaker. And early he made a play, only to be negated by an undisciplined play. Got to control those emotions, Bidi, that's for sure. Second and 13 for the Fratman. Lumley rolling left, looking downfield. And as he releases the ball, he loses it. And are they going to call this an incomplete pass, or is this going to be a turnover? It is indeed, as referee... Schroeder signals it's London ball. So the Beef Eaters on two AQO drives have come up with two turnovers. And that is going to be a concern moving forward. You were not even in seven minutes into this game and the Fratman have turned the ball over twice, one on the ground and one interception. You're gonna see a replay here where Austin Lumley's gonna sprint out to his left and you get pursuit from the backside halfback who gets there. And it looks like his arm was going forward, but the ball may have been out beforehand. Number 30 was able to get his hands on it. And that for the beef eaters is Kevin, Kevin Perra. Kevin is the uh, player, you're right, but he, number 30, the player that uh, gave chase and uh, maybe jarred that ball loose. So the beef eaters, first and 10 from their 41. All kinds of movement. Oh my, the flags are coming out. Anytime a lineman moves, it's a pretty easy call. Those are some pretty big bodies there, and you can't really <laughs> hold your momentum moving forward. So you get the five-yard walk off here. It's pretty which hard for those guys to hide. But <laughs> it is. It really is. And I'm a former lineman, and I hate that because it's the only time you ever get announced or noticed when you do something wrong, offsides or hold. This uh, London offense has been struggling already, and the last thing they need is five extra yards to yeah. tack on and gain their yardage. So they have to really fi fix that up. And that's what they're faced with as they lose five first and 15 now. And the Beef Eaters again trying to go to the ground, maybe get back to the original line of scrimmage. That is a great effort run by number 33, Dwayne Stewart. He was actually contacted after maybe a yard and a half gain and he drove his feet to pick up the penalty yardage. If you're the Fratman, you're sort of okay with that. It's still second and long, but on first contact, you want to be able to stop the ball carrier at the point you made first contact. Yep. Second and 10 for the Beef Eaters. Uh, back at the original line of scrimmage. This is number 14, Chuck Wall, trying to get outside. He does, and he gets the first down, and a couple of yards to spare. And this time, the option read, the quarterback actually pulled it. And you know you're setting that up. The, the onus is going to be on the defensive end. That's number one, Anthony McDonald. He came so flat down the line of scrimmage on the heels of the offensive lineman that it was a very easy read for the quarterback. And he picked up some big yardage there to move the ball just into the Fratman side of the field. As you see, uh, one of the linemen for the Beef Eaters looks like big number 60, might be down. And we saw that last week. Ottawa Keith, struggled with some healthy yep. linemen. Kiefer and Dale is the man that's down, buddy. And they're looking at his lower body. Let's hope it's nothing too serious. Um, again, most of the time these linemen don't get noticed. Another time they get noticed is when you do get hurt. Day over 10. 
All right, well, with that said, 6.55 to go here in quarter number one. It's the Fratman scoreless with the London Bee Feeders. More OFC football action right after these messages. You're watching AKO Fratman Football on we-tv.ca. The first kiss. She's thinking about a million things, like should I lean in or let him? Do I close my eyes or open them? But for him, he's only thinking about one thing. Did she have peanut butter for lunch? Bye. Great. My car's blocked in. I got this. Mm. Mm. I think the parking brake is on. Geez, what's in this thing, rocks? Welcome back to the Windsor Stadium. Dominic Papa along with Badi Kwas. AKO football on we-tv.ca. And a London Beef Eater player is shaking up there. That was Kiefer Dale. Take a look at the standings really quick here, Badi, and uh, you'll see there's a real log jam. And uh, the Hamilton Hurricanes, actually, we will announce, we have word that the Hurricanes lost today, so they're now 3-1. and one. And Ottawa knocks them off, so Ottawa wins a big game on the road in Hamilton. From what I understand, and it's not official, but they won nine to eight, but they, so, yeah, wow. That's great Team news for the Fratmen. Yeah, that's great they, news for the Fratmen. So they could really make a, a good statement here if they could put together a victory. But that's what the standings look like going into tonight's contest. A real log jam of teams are at one and one. And you talked about the importance of winning tonight here, Buddy. Wall, a quick handoff. He finds number 33, Dwayne Stewart. And Stewart with some uh, pretty fancy feet. Excellent inside run from Stewart. He did a nice job of finding his way through the hole. A nice blocking assignment by the beef eater lineman, and they just inside run, found his way through it. 13 yards, first down. Interesting uh, that the beef eaters changed their quarterback so early, but he, uh, we started with Colin Drennan. First two series, nothing going on. So obviously the head coach says that's enough. Let's see what Mr. Wall can do. Chuck Wall, number 14, and so far he's been moving this team. Sure has, and first downs, if you get close to 25 of them, usually you win a lot of games, as we see a flag, which is usually a time count, yep. as indicated by the head referee. So that's gonna cost the offense five yards. So that hurts the beef eater drive a little bit. They'll pay, be faced with a first and 15 now and the line of scrimmage at the AKO 48 yard line. Still scoreless here. A beautiful night for football here in Southwestern Ontario. Another nice crowd assembled here at the Windsor Stadium, which is really nice to see that the Fratmen are getting some very good support. Stewart bobbles it for a second, but then he gets it back and holds on. And he picks up maybe three, possibly four yards there. Not a very clean exchange, though, Biddy. Not a clean exchange, and this is the mode that a lot of offenses are going to show a little jet sweep, read off of that. The quarterback still had the option of pulling it out, which is why there wasn't a clean exchange, but nonetheless, it was still a positive play. Yeah, Stewart recovered nicely and got some positive yards. Wall looking to throw, pumps, pumps, flushed out. There's a flag on the play. Wall now makes a nice move. Wall getting to the outside, looking for that first down marker. He's going to be short. There is a flag on the play, but uh, boy, Wall uh, showing some pretty good scrambling ability there. And the indication is illegal contact uh, against the Fratman, and we're going to see it officially signaled, which when the quarterback has a clutch and double pump like he did, the defending the defensive backs usually end up in a double move situation and they probably got caught with a hold there. Nothing indicated yet by referee Schroeder. There it is. And you called it, Biddy. So it's gonna be a 10 yard walk off and it's gonna replay the down. It's gonna be second still because they needed 13 to get the first, but now obviously you're in second and three. 
and pro possibly even three down territory from here because if you can get a yard or yard and a half, you're probably going to go for it on third and short. So that is indeed the case here. So the bee feeder is trying to keep this drive alive. Wall handoff to Stewart. He goes right, then darts left, and he has the yards needed to move the sticks. Again, same play they've run three times successfully, just that power play, the backside guard's gonna pull around to the right, insert, find that first spot linebacker, and your running back, Stewart's just gonna follow the bigs up front. Yes, indeed. First and 10 for the beef eaters at the AKO 29. Fake handoff, Wall's gonna keep it as he tucks it under, he gets to the outside to the right, flag on the play, Wall, does he get in? No Ball. indication yet. Well, the run looks like it's going to get him all the way down to the one yard line or so. However, there is a flag on the play, and it's usually in the vicinity of a block in the back or a hold from the perimeter, which the referees look like they're bringing the ball back a little bit, and that isn't the indication. You have a block in the back against the beef eater, so it's going to negate the long run. And I don't think it was enough for first down yardage to be gained, so they'll find the point at which it went to the run went to and the hold went to. And they're gonna back him up from there. Holding that line will just be five. First and 20, And as you can see, Mr. McDonald is walking the full 10 yards off. So it was before the yardage, so it was a critical mistake by the beef eaters as they had something going. However, if you're a fratman, Defender, you have to be more disciplined. I know Coach Morenci is going to want those defensive ends. Again, that was Anthony McDonald. And I know earlier this week when I was at practice watching, he said he's got to step up his game and he has to make a better play than that. So penalties have been costly so far in this game, Badi. As Wall is on the run and he just throws it away more or less. Again, good pressure by the Fratman, specifically number five, Eric Lovis. Yeah, it was, it was real good pressure, but what a lot of people might not see behind the play was that was supposed to be a screen. They actually want to invite that pressure, but Chris Denno, the linebacker behind that, squatted right on the running back, and the quarterback had no one to throw to. So that was excellent back-end help from the linebacker who took away the screen, bringing up the second and 20. So the Fratman now trying to get the B feeder offense off the field. Wall with a quick handoff here again to his, seems like his main man there, Dwayne Stewart. And right away he stopped, maybe picks up a couple. So you look at the penalties so far here, Badi, it's hurt the B feeders, it's hurt the Fratman. Again, discipline, you talk about that, gonna be very important. Of course, we saw a beef eater player uh, taken off the field earlier on. Becca Luden has uh, some information for us. Becca? Already in the first quarter, the London beef eaters trainers are getting their, their work cut out for them. Colin Drennan, the quarterback of the beef eaters, left the field. No comment on that injury was given, but he was being put into a sling. We were told we'll see if he'll return for the rest of the game. As for O-lineman Dale Kiefer, he limped off, favoring his right side, and there is yet to be an update on that injury. Now back to Dom in the booth for the rest of the first quarter. Busy, busy. Well, we saw that with Ottawa last week too, but he, I mean, we talk about AK's, AKO's physicality and already maybe showing up here in this game. Absolutely, and they've dodged a few bullets. They've already turned the ball over twice, and Ottawa, excuse me, London was just playing it safe on that second and long, just trying to pin the Fratman deep eventually with that third down punt, but it didn't really work out too well because the Fratman return got it all the way up to what looks like the 25 yard line, which is a fair start. At least you're not in your end zone. And if they can actually take care of the ball, they might find themselves scoring in the first quarter of a game. Just over three minutes to go here in quarter one, the Fratman first and 10 from their, they say officially the 24. Lumley rolls right, throws downfield, Three beef feeders in the neighborhood and also in the area for the Fratman was Kyle McGinnis. 
Lumley again throwing off that back foot though, Biddy. I don't know if he's getting the full power that he wants or needs to get that ball in front of McGinnis. But he was attacking the line of scrimmage. So on a sprint out, that, that's gonna be okay because he's gonna be in a situation where his momentum is going forward. So at least the ball's gonna be thrown in that direction with his momentum going forward. But he did have about a 20 yard completion if he would have found Russo underneath. Steven Russo was just coming back on a little bit of a curl or an out and he had him wide open, but he wanted to get the big home run play. Second and 10 for the Fratman. Two and a half to go in quarter number one. We're still scoreless. Here's a hitch pass as he finds his target, Kyle McGinnis. And McGinnis looks like he may have got over the 25 yard line to about the 26. So the Fratman's still gonna be well short of the first down yardage needed. Punt unit comes in for coach LaChance. And the logic behind a simple pass like that is your quarterback wants to see a completion. And I know Coach LaChance wants to get him, hey, let's complete a pass. It's a simple hinge, hitch. You practice that throw every single day. If your slot receiver can break the tackle, he might get the first down. Shots, punt, and shot runs into a player, and he's he's having words with the official. And looks like the Fratmen have come up with the ball. We've got an injured London player. We got all kinds of things happening here at Windsor Stadium. You can see the uh, London player Wasim Gozail uh, favoring that right knee, but also the ball came loose off the punt. There's a flag, and Steve Shot was really upset. The AKO punter he felt that he was interfered with by Gozail number 40. Yeah, so like you said, there is a lot to digest there. You got a punter who's upset that he felt he was contacted. You got a ball that bounced back into a London defend a blocker, and it's a live ball. Now the question was, is there a fratman within that five-yard uh, radius, which in Canada you have to give five yards on punts, and the Fratman did recover it, but as indicated by Mr. Schroeder, it looks like the flag is going to be picked up, and it looks like it's going to be a live play, and after that fumble, and you'll see on the replay, as the ball comes down onto the ground, it takes a backspin bounce into number 39, and you'll see this here right into his shin, and that means it's going to be picked up right there by the Fratman. They get an opportunity to set up at around midfield with a first down, and we still have a young man for the Beef Eaters down. So in our pregame, you heard Becca say how the London Beef Eaters came in off a bye relatively healthy. I'm pretty sure they're not going to be leaving this game saying they're <laughs> relatively healthy. They have three guys, the quarterback, we're not sure his starting quarterback, not sure his return status. An offensive lineman is already out. Yeah, and that was you already uh, number have a, 60. Exactly, and you already have a linebacker who could be out. So you, you, you have a young team as it is. Now you're probably going to have to get even younger because my guess is their backups are even younger, less experienced. So that could be a developing story, and we're only – in the first quarter. We first still have quarter, two yep. minutes left in this opening quarter. 205 to be exact. AK will have the ball offensively. They'll scrimmage from their own 53 yard line 53 yard line. So the London player up on his own power. That's good to see. And he's uh gonna be okay. He's gonna be back in the game. Oh, and up. we now have a reversal of the call. After a lengthy discussion, the wow. injury actually gave the officials a lot of time to discuss this situation, and you know they're going to have to go to the Fratman bench and explain Coach, what's Coach going LaChance on. Coach LaChance is already oh, halfway out on the field. He's like, okay, I need an explanation now. Yeah, and the referees are going to come back in, and they discussed it, and they reverse the call. They're going to give a five yards. No yards call, which means the ball goes back in the hands of the beef eaters. On the replay, we did see it early. I will have to say I think it is the right call at this point in time because where it hit the blocker, you had a Fratman personnel there, which was probably only two yards away. Uh, you can see Coach LaChance talking it over with a couple of the officials. And he's not liking it. It's very rare you see a changed call, but uh, as Badi mentioned, the uh, officials had a little bit of time to discuss it, figure it out, and thus the call. Yeah, there's a couple now, new now rule we're gonna changes. Get, now referee Schroeder is going to go talk to 
the uh, coach of the London Bee Feeders, John Buvaladis. Yeah, and there's one rule change that is affecting the punt, which may have been interpreted slightly different. Now what's happening is headshot got in that five yard circle and had shot been the individual who recovered it. Even if there's a fragment in the five yard zone, he the uh, fumble recovery would have been live. The onside kick would have been live. So that's probably some of the discussion. Who recovered it? Was it an onside person? In this case scenario, the recovery wasn't by an onside person, which means there was an, an individual in that five yard zone. So they walk off the five yards and move the ball inside the 50 yard line. They're at the AKO 48, first and 10 for the bee feeders. This is Stewart. He's been the busiest player on the offense for the London team. He picks up good four or five. Uh, again, a nice good run. That's exactly what you want to do. Your backup quarterback's in. You're going to settle him in. And if you can hand the ball off and get four yards on first down all game long, I'm pretty sure if you're the beat beaters, you're going to be pretty pleased with that. Now the Fratman, the they are have always been one that has caused turnovers, created some sacks, made that timely play. We'll see if they can bail out the offense uh, early in this game. Call it second and six for the B-Feeders at the AKO 44. Just over a minute to go here in the first quarter. This is, I believe, Stewart again, and he's pulled back. He gets maybe a yard or two, but London's going to be short of the first down yardage needed. So the punt unit comes in for the B-Feeders, and they will no doubt try to pin the AKO Fratman deep into their own end. Yeah, number 55 for the Fratman. Eric Lovis was able to get some early penetration there which caused Stewart to do a little jump step. He's a big back, he is shifty, but I'm pretty confident that if he gets ahead of steam going forward, he's not gonna be tackled for uh, a one yard loss or a nominal gain, so he had to reroute, which is a good job by the Fratman defense. Here's the punt, and it's gonna be Neary just inside his 10. Looking for a couple of blocks, Neary gets out to about the AKO 15 yard line. First and 10 for the Fratman. 35 seconds remaining in the first quarter. So the Fratman in this quarter have had some first downs. They haven't been inept on offense. They've missed a couple opportunities, but they two haven't Two turnovers, scored. Badi. Uh, when the Fratman seem to be moving the ball very nicely, and then those two big turnovers, the, the INT, uh, the one INT really, I think, hurt them, took them out of the flow. And uh, since then, though, they haven't really been able to get back on track offensively and give credit to London for changing some of that momentum. But penalties have killed, have, have hurt both teams here, I think, in this first quarter. Nice run here by the Fratman's Emmanuel Juma. 21, Manny Juma. Inside zone down. running play, and he is very shifty. This young man is one heck of a running back, and he bounces way through the line of scrimmage. He showed some early promise against Hamilton in week one, had some great runs, and He's still in the game, and you might see him get this ball uh, one more time on the last play of the quarter. Yeah, this will be uh, the last play of the quarter, unless there's a penalty. First and 10 for the Fratman. And, and Badi, you called it right. Juma gets the uh, handoff again, and he picks up about seven or eight more yards. They will switch ends, and that's the uh, end of the first quarter. You can see we are scoreless after 15 minutes of play. And the London Bee Feeders and Windsor AKO uh, Fratman putting on a very hard hitting, good football display here so far at the uh, Windsor Stadium. We're gonna go down to field level. That's where we have uh, Rebecca Luden and Rebecca has some very special guests with her, Rebecca. After a scoreless first half of the AKO Fratman and the Beef London Bee Feeders, I'm here with John DiNapoli's daughters, Amanda, Alexia and Allie. So what was your dad's favorite sport? Um, I think his favorite sport would be football because he Worked the gate at Wexa and always like to watch here, AKO, Michigan, and Lancers. So since his favorite sport was football, did you guys spend a lot of time with him on the football field? Yeah, most of the time, uh, sometimes I would help work the gate and he would always take one of the three of us to a football game and we really enjoyed that. And now he coached you in soccer, so what was it like having him as a coach as well? Um, he coached me very... He coached me um, stuff that I still know from last year. Yeah, so you carry that with you all the time, the lessons that your dad taught you on the field as well? Yes. Yeah. And now what were some of your favorite memories with your dad? 
Um, I think just spending time with him every minute counts because you really never know like as this tragic, tragic past. So you always have to take what you can get. For sure. That's everything from the sidelines. Let's send it back up to Dom in the booth for the rest of this, the first half. Thanks a lot, Becca. Outstanding. What a beautiful young family. And uh, boy, oh boy, uh, John uh, and his uh, time here with them did a tremendous job along with his wonderful wife, Sonia, uh, raising these three young ladies. A tremendous family and uh, so happy to see them here taking in AKO football. John certainly is looking down and I know he's smiling watching those three young ladies. And there are no shy performances there, but they, mm -hmm. they have it uh, down pat already, I think. Not at all. They are, like you said, very beautiful young girls, and they speak so well. They're so young, but they're so articulate, and they answer questions, and they're very clear. It's and a beautiful thing to see. Obviously very <laughs> proud of their dad, and rightfully so. Uh, he did a lot of tremendous work uh, for this sports community, and uh, John, you always knew where you stood with him, and uh, he was going to work hard no matter what, and uh, he's sorely missed, that's for sure. That pass almost picked off. I'll tell you what about that would have been a pick six, but he if uh, Tyler aren't and uh, brings that pass down. And there was a miscommunication there on the route combination. I believe number eight for the Fratman Holmes was supposed to get over the top and get to the middle of the field on some sort of post, which is gonna allow McGinnis to run that wheel, and he didn't, which kept that halfback sitting right there. And like you said, that was almost a pick six the other way. So the Fratman uh, two out. Uh, here and uh, to start the second quarter Steve Schock comes into the game he stands at about his uh, 16 yard line ready to punt for the Fratman nice job there by shot takes an AKO roll picked up there by Derek Coleman Coleman looking for some blocks and good downfield coverage by the Fratman and this is something that we saw last week, relatively good coverage. You have some very athletic frapmen, and they're also very big as well. You don't, you can't really move them off their running lanes. So as they're covering, they're able to maintain their running lanes. You saw the ball carrier bounce back and forth three or four times, and he had absolutely nowhere to go. Outstanding job. I want to give a shout out to our good friends and uh, good sponsor here with uh, we-tv.ca, Pizza King. Of course, they provide all of our crew meals, outstanding uh, stuff there by Mito and Ron Martinello. We appreciate their support. Give the King a ring. You can see the number and uh, have a good piece of pie on the Pizza King guys. That pass, is it gonna be intercepted? Or are they gonna say it hit the ground? No, nope, they're saying that it hit the ground. No, they actually indicated oh, an interception. They okay, they did say and an interception. The, once it was intercepted, he's down. He can't advance it, so there's nothing ensuing after that. But it was initially bobbled, but as the defender rolled on his back to handle it, he was able to come down with it. And I'm not sure exactly the number who made that play, but that was an in interception, and that's going to give the Fremen their first opportunity to try to capitalize off a beef eater turnover. Yeah, I believe that is the first turnover for the beef eaters. And they have pretty good field position to start this drive at their own 53 yard line first and 10 13 20 and counting down in the first quarter we're still looking for the first score of the game Lumley's pass he hits his target I believe that is Cody St. Pierre number 80 he gets his Cody first touch of the game Cody and Another we're going to get a replay here on the interception and what you will see is you'll see an initial bobble and the ball never hits the ground it's flipped up and he rolls on his back and he brings it and corrals it back into his body. And that's number 31 for the Fratman, Thomas Huang. And he made an outstanding, excuse me, I don't have number 31. No, Hill, tr uh, Trey Hill. Trey uh, Hill, Trey outstanding Hill. play. Outstanding play, yeah. That kind of looked like Lynn Swan there. There's a pass, Lumley, and he finds his target, number 28, Kyle McGinnis, the first big pass play of the game. And the Fratman way down in London territory to about the, it looks like the, 15 yard line, first and 10. So the Fratman threatening to open up the scoring here. And if there is any wind, it is now at the backs of the Fratman. And that play there, if it was just a little less over the top, you see McGinnis walking right into the end zone. He made a nice job extending for it. A good throw, a completed pass well into the beef eater territory. 
So the Fratman now, first and 10 from the B feeder 15. 12 minutes to go here. And we're going to get a timeout, AKO timeout. Coach LaChance wants to make sure here, Badi. Yeah, they had some personnel issues. It looked like they didn't have the right formation in. And it looks like they're going to bring back McGinnis into the play. Oftentimes, after a long running catch like that, what ends up happening is the guy's gas. He calls for a sub. Maybe the wrong personnel came in, so they didn't have the package that they wanted. It is a good time to call that timeout. You haven't scored yet. You want to ensure you capitalize off the turnover from the beef eaters. Settle your offense down. You're at, at the 15 yard line. Really get that good call right now in to open up the entire field and entire playbook for your second down play, unless you obviously you score here. So AKO discusses it and gets everything put in place, or they hope they do. And they have a first and 10 at the London 15 yard line, 12.03 in quarter number two. Dominic Pop along with Badi Quas here at Windsor Stadium, the entire we-tv.ca crew also. Glad to have you along for the ride here and hope you're enjoying this telecast of OFC football. Good game so far. Quick hand off to McCann. McCann breaks a tackle, touchdown AKO! And that is why you call that timeout. They got the right personnel package in and they run the ball with Cody McCann on that inside trap, and he runs it to perfection. He stays tight to the point of attack. Once he sees the next level open, he makes one move and cuts it back for the touchdown, and you'll see it here. Reverse pivot from the quarterback, a jab step from McCann. He snaps underneath it, untouched all the way until he gets to the next level, and then it's a simple stiff arm and a walk into the end zone to give the Fratman an early lead. Shot in for the point after try. AKO draws first blood and shot completes it. Makes it 7-0. The AKO Fratman over the London Bee Feeders. 11.57 to go here in the second quarter. As Cody McCann runs it in from 15 yards out and puts AKO on the scoreboard. So the offense coming back there, but the nice big play to Kyle McGinnis, the real big play of that drive. And again, you look at uh, Lumley, he is more or less picking up where he left off last week. Uh, absolutely, and what you're going to end up seeing as the game evolves is the Fratman still haven't had that um, play-action pass rolled in yet. They've had some pretty good success running the ball. Once they get their play-action in, you're going to probably see something over the top real soon. They've been real patient, real disciplined, haven't shown that play-action. You know London's going to have to start committing into the box a little bit more, which is going to free up a very talented and veteran receiving core to make some plays. All right. Sun's starting to set here in southwestern Ontario, but a very beautiful evening unfolding here. Nice, cool weather, no humidity, but I love this time of year, that's for sure. It is indeed perfect football weather tonight. Shots kick off. This is going to be handled by Travis Ryan, number 24. He gets a couple of blocks, and boy, does he ever take a good stick. I believe it was number 27. I'll tell you what, this guy, Seamus Neary, he loves special teams, but he, he does a good job. And again, it's those big bodies. They're not getting pushed off their landmarks, and they're able to maintain their run lanes, and no matter where their ball carrier turns, there seems to be a Fratman defender and tackler right there. And as he turned back to the middle of the field, he got hit. A nice clean hit, led with the shoulder, looked like right to the chest plate. And that, that's going to leave a little bit of mark later in the game. So London takes over at their own 33-yard line. 11.40, they're down seven to the Fratman. Wall stays in the game. He hands off to Stewart. Stewart goes right, gets a block, and fights off a tackle. And... Gets about seven or eight good yards there for the beef eaters. Some good surge inside from the beef eaters as they go right back to the basics. That power play once again. It has provided some success, bringing up a second down and one. And I know that with the backup quarterback in, they're going to have to rely heavily on this run. What it does is if you can get a couple first downs every now and then, you're going to really drag this game and you're going to allow yourself to hang around. And that's what London really needs to do right now, hang around. And if you're AKO, you don't want to let them hang around. And we saw what AKO did last week by hanging around with the Ottawa Sooners. Nothing doing there this time on the handoff as Stewart has about four or five AKO Fratman jerseys all over him. 
And that ends up being a loss. A full two and a half, three yard loss, and that's gonna bring up third down and four, and the punt unit looks like it's been signaled in by the beef eater sideline, and that is not something you wanted to see. It's some of the drawbacks of being not being under center. It's third and second and one in Canada. Most of the times you wanna just get under center, wedge forward, get the first down, and then open up your playbook again. But on second and one and you get driven back, you're forced into a punt situation. So there are great things that come out of that pistol spread option set. That's not one of them. Mm -hmm. So as Bidi mentions, the beef eaters forced to punt. This is number two, Matt Wolf. High punt hanging. Handled by number 22, Josh Wright, and he holds on to it, and he gets out to the AKO 53-yard line. First and 10 for the Fratman there. 10 minutes exactly to go in quarter number two. The Fratman leading it 7-0. And that might not look like anything special, but the ball was nose diving, and oftentimes when a ball starts nose diving, it turns over, and it could have dribbled all the way inside the 30-yard line. Wright did a great job of handling it cleanly in the air. He fell forward for only one yard, but now the Fratman are still set up near midfield. Good field position again for the AQ offense. Lumley gets the offense going. A quick handoff to number eight this time, Curtis Holmes. And this time on that jet sweep there, much like last time, he had the edge. He picked up seven, eight, nine yards, but it doesn't look like there's a flag this time around. And it's gonna bring up a second down and about three, uh, make it a long two yards. Okay, a long two yards, buddy? A long two yards it is. Want to give a shout out to the AQO uh, staff here, buddy. Uh, did a nice pregame ceremony commemorating John DiNapoli. I uh, want to make sure that uh, they get uh, credited for that because uh, uh, they don't forget John and, and his family and uh, get a very nice ceremony before the game here tonight. So hats off to the Fratman for putting that together. Absolutely. And John was countless hours of help with me, myself and Rob McIntyre, to be the high school the, yeah. football season. He loved it, though. He and just loved it. He, 100%. he thrived on it. It made his day. And uh, he loved helping the young athletes, teams, anybody that he could help out in the sports field, or anything for that matter. It went beyond sports with John, but we all knew him for his sports passion. And I can just see him asking, why you're running sideways on second down and two? <laughs> you're I right. really can, because now he, it brings he would up be that questioning it. He'd, he'd, he'd go to LaShance and say, what are you doing there? <laughs> Unquestionably. Yeah, that, that's John in a nutshell. But it, it, it's all meant for the good, that's for sure. Good punt here by Shot. Handled by Derek Coleman, and he's forced out of bounds after picking up seven or eight yards on the run back. 8.27 to go. Here in the first half, AKO up 7-0 on the Cody McCann 15-yard touchdown. And so far, that's been the story of the game. The Fremen have been able to run the ball with some success, but they've turned the ball over twice, which has negated some uh, scoring opportunities. Had they been able to cash in even a couple field goals, maybe a touchdown, they would have extended this lead and they would have been in a better situation. But with eight and a half minutes left in this first half, Fratman can set themselves up with a good defensive stop here. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens here. The beef eaters need to get some offense going. They've been sputtering a little bit. Chuck Wall, number 14, flag on the play. Wall flushed out of the pocket, now stops, then pumps. Now Wall looking downfield. He's going to tuck it under and forced out of bounds by Jake Nicoletti, number six. Wall may have picked up a yard, but we do have a flag on the play. Early, that's one of two things. There's an alignment issue and you get the Fratman lined up offside or you get an offsides against the beef eaters, which is indicated by the head referee offside and that's going to back eaters. them up. Unless, of course, they decline the penalty. They picked up a yard and a half, so it could have been second down and eight and a half. We're waiting to see the call here. 
Also, uh, you know, interesting, Mike Morenci has been working day and night. Of course, Mike took over ownership of the team, and I have to really give Mike a shout-out. Uh, he was actually literally sweeping and mopping and doing whatever here. For some odd reason, nothing was done with the stadium this week. The garbages weren't uh, cleaned up. Uh, the washrooms weren't taken care of. Nothing was taken care of here, and I really, you know, I know it's the school board that's running this place, and I hope the school board will come on board and help uh, Coach Morenci start supporting him because they AKO needs this field. We need this field. It's a great place. Let's get on board together and let's do this thing right. Let's make it comfortable for the fans that are coming here and let's make it a great spot to come and enjoy and football now, because, you know, the high school stuff starts here next week. Of course, you're a big part of that, Badi. So it's important that this place gets taken care of properly. And right now, up to this point, I have to tell you, I'm a little disappointed. It hasn't been happening. Uh, there's been things even with our broadcast that we were hoping for. It hasn't happened. So hopefully we can get everybody on the same page here. Give so Mike now, the support that he needs and deserves and let's get this place to be a special place again it is a storied history here at windsor stadium and now we get a reversal after a lengthy discussion the fratman declined the penalty bringing up second down and eight as play resumes i had my rant for the night buddy <laughs> wall quick pass over the middle he's looking for nick matsukis and they don't connect so it will now be a third down and nine situation for the bee feeders no doubt they will be punting and I wouldn't be surprised if they contemplated giving up the safety here. Uh, you're going to catch the ball and field the ball at probably right around your own five-yard line. So it's not out of normal possibility to back up. However, the punter for the bee feeders has done a real good job, Matt Wolf, of getting the ball off. So uh, it's 50-50 it, it's as to whether or not he's going to concede or kick it away here. So the Fratman looking to get good field position here as Matt Wolf stands inside his five yard line. And a low kick, takes a beef eater roll. Neary is gonna let it roll, he finally picks it up. He looks for a couple of blocks, flag on the play. Neary still running. He's going east-west though, but, but he, that's not gonna work. You gotta get some north-south stuff going. Absolutely, and when you let the ball bounce, bad things happen. Mind you, it was a very short kick, so you can't fault the return men for setting up so deep. That flag is going to be a five-yard no yard, so they're going to get five yards and move it closer to the 50-yard line, which is going to be indicated here against the beef eaters. So the Fratmen are going to be set up, and we've probably said this, and no, this is not a replay of last week's game. The Fratmen have good field position. We've said it all week last week. We're saying it again right now. Uh, the last offensive drive, they were able to really – have some rhythm both on offense and on defense, or excuse me, passing and running, and maybe that'll translate into another touchdown or at least points in some capacity on this drive. Lumley takes the snap, hands off. I believe that's, is that McCann again, Badi? No, I, it might be Donkers. Okay, Donkers, exactly number 25. Sure yep, you're right. It is Donkers. And that is just that power play that London has already run successfully, and this turns out to be about a five-and-a-half-yard run. Uh, good blocking up front. You saw the offensive lineman getting some good surge here, putting it in second and manageable. And so far, this has been Austin's best friend, this early running game. Sure. Uh, hopefully, he makes a, a good decision like he did the last time, throwing the ball to the open receiver. Or, of course, if they opt to run the ball, they can still get that first down on the ground. Second and four for the Fratman, and they're not going to get it. Nice defensive stop there by the beef eaters. It's an actual turnover. It was a fumble. Oh, was it fumbled? Exchange. I didn't see it come loose, but I apologize. Yeah, Austin and uh, wow. Juma miscommunicated on that counter tray, and the third turnover. Despite losing the turnover battle right now, the Fratman are up, but with 6.30 left in this first half, and the beef eaters set up in Fratman territory, you'll see here on the replay that uh, – the counter is going to work back to the right of the screen, but it just looked oh. like it was a, uh, just the pace of it was maybe a little quick. Juma looked like he got on top of Austin a little too violently, and the ball bounced right off his belly and into the hands of the beef eaters. Great look on that replay there, that's for sure. Wall, he's going to pass one here, looking downfield. That's almost picked off by Neary. The uh, receiver in the neighborhood for the beef eaters was Christian Ridley, number 87, but uh, Neary had the best look at that ball. And that is a very traditional play call right after a turnover, especially when you're in your opponent's end. Try to take that home run ball. You've got some momentum. See if you can actually build off of it. 
the drawback is, of course, you're in second and long if it was incomplete, which was the case. And he threw in a double coverage, probably an ill-advised throw. But nonetheless, they're taking a shot. Christian Ridley from the American School of Dubai. And nothing doing there for the beef eaters of Fratman. Come up big, good containment there. Great job by the defense. They set the edge real solid there. Again, if you're a spread option team, you have to stay disciplined and true to it. If you're going to run the spread option, sometimes you have to sacrifice and you got to keep with, hey, we're going to set you up, set you up. And then when the quarterback keeps it off the back end, that's when possibly a big play happens. So we're going to look to see the quarterback hold on to it soon. So the Fratman dodge a bullet after turning the ball over. They force the London offense off the field. A good high punt this time by Wolf. This is going to be Neary. Neary goes right, makes a couple of moves. Neary still up, gets across the 25 to about the 26. Flag there is a flag play. down on the play. Well, that was the flag was thrown into the bunch. So I'm not exactly sure what is going to be indicated more times than not it's a face mask which yeah. is indeed the indication when you get guys coming in and trying to punch and strip at the ball their hands get a little up top and that is going to move the fratman 15 yards up and across the 40 yard line so a nice break there for the fratman they start at their 41 first and 10 just over five to go here in the second quarter 5 12 to be exact referee schroeder makes the call and he gets the time clock going and once again, we have a very veteran crew here calling the game for us at Windsor Stadium. Yeah, a good crew. And, uh, you, you know, you talk about referee Schroeder, who's got uh, many years of experience. Here's a great run by Juma. Oh, my, Juma all over the place, all the way down to the London end of the field to about the beef eater. It looks like 37-yard line, a huge game for the Fratman. Yeah, they just line up in a power set to the right. They got the fullback Cody McCann going from the right side leading up the first spot linebacker on the left. And Juma hits that hole with tremendous speed. Honestly, the one person I liken, liken him to, and I believe it's the same number, is LaDainian Tomlinson. He uh, runs downhill. He's shifty like that. He wears the same number, for heaven's sake. Excellent run. And again, it's been the best friend of the Frab in this running game. Well, they uh, gain huge yardage there. High snap. Lumley handles it. And I believe this is Donkers, Donkers again, number 25. Here's the uh, previous play of and you'll uh, Juma. You'll see the fullback McCann come across to the left here, and Juma just hits at full speed. And he got good push from the offensive lineman, and next thing you know, he's in the open. And he makes a couple guys miss. He's shifty. He drives his feet, protects the ball on contact, and he's ready to come right back in the game. It's scary when you see a guy like Juma with that great speed and uh, that, that ability to turn on a dime, getting out into the open like that. It's got to be scary for an opposing team. Yeah, we had plenty of years of watching Barry Sanders run, and you don't oh want to see him in the open field. Handoff here again as that ball comes loose, but it was well after the play had uh, been completed. And they go inside on that little inside trap to get the first down. It looks like they picked up about six yards, which is just what they needed to get that first down. Yeah, they're close. We'll see where they spot it. See where they might get our first measurement here, possibly. Yep, it looks like they're calling for the stick, so we're yep. going to get the first measurement. If they're short, we I've already heard from across the field, <laughs> Coach LaShawn's yelling, yep. Rhino, 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 which is their heavy package. They're going to yep. bring the guys forward. They're going to go for it for sure. unquestionably from here. So as they lengthen the chains here, you're going to see it is a first it. down. First it is it just is. enough for the first of the down. Football. First down, a kill. As they are down to the... And you'll see Mr. Schroeder there walking with the chain. All he's making sure is the ball's on the left hash and exactly where the end of the ball was, he's going to link up to make sure it's spotted exactly there. And now they have the yardage all set. Yeah. So it looks like they're going to be at about the uh, B-feeder 27-yard line, first and 10. Actually, it looks like they've changed again. 
Oh, now they're going to change it. So the they're camera say angle looked like he had the first down, but this wow. time they're saying he's inches away. So here comes that rhino look. You're going to see all the linemen all beefed up inside. So they're going to come under center, and they're just going to wedge this thing forward. So expect them to come inside here and just power this up. <laughs> Full house, that's for sure. Right at uh, Coach, or uh, I should say Austin Lumley. He gets a good push, and... And Austin actually stayed on his feet. The pile just actually collapsed underneath him, and he was able to easily lunge over for the first down. Yep. Uh, and that's something that didn't happen week one. They were stopped a number of times on third down and one, and since then they haven't been, and that is so critical. We already saw uh, the Beef Eaters lose a second down and one opportunity. The Fratman capitalized on that. They're getting the three-minute whistle right now, meaning the three minutes are blown in. The clock will run a little slower with the three minutes because now the ball's going to be, the clock's mm -hmm. going to stop with every out of bounds play, things along those lines. First and 10 from the 26, Juma going straight ahead again, gets down to the 20 yard line, so picks up about six. Second and four, we'll call it. 2.48 to go here in the first half. And, and it looks like Juma's down on to a to knee right now. Yeah, Juma down on the right yeah, knee. He could very well be winded here because he actually delivered a blow and there was a collision, but he's actually limping a little. Yeah. So maybe it's a knee and ankle, a hip. Yeah. Could be a Charlie horse. Uh, he's, he's out on, on his, his own, own power. power, so that's good. Yeah. Looks like he's going to be okay. But again, an excellent run. Six yards. Yep. yep. They're going to put themselves in great situation. If they get one more first down here, which they can, and they run two more plays and score a touchdown, they can almost get this under a minute and put themselves in a great position despite the three to one against them in the turnover turnovers, battle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, uh, despite the turnovers, uh, London hasn't been able to take advantage of them, with e for sure. And uh, again, that's uh, credit to the uh, Fratman defense, who again has have a very solid first half of football here. Second and four. Flag on the play. Lumley going to roll right. He throws it. And into the end zone, incomplete it goes. There is a flag but there the is play. a flag on the play. I can call that from here. This is going to be a legal procedure. The Fratman, there was confusion. The receiver never got himself set on the line of scrimmage, and that is the indication. You have an illegal procedure. Now, here's the interesting situation. My guess is you just declined it. It was an incomplete pass. You're going to bring up third down and the four yards, force the Fratman to try a field goal attempt. You're not going to back him up and give him the, a second down opportunity again. And indeed, they do decline it, and uh, Steve Schott, number 12, comes into the game for the Fratman. Schott coming from British Columbia, Badi, was on the practice roster of the BC Lions. Fine young man, had a chance to talk to him this uh, week earlier on Tuesday, and uh, he's really enjoying himself here in the Windsor-Essex area. He loves the fact that there's NFL, Major League Baseball, and hockey and all that. He can't wait for the Red Wings to start up. He's hoping to take in a few games, so... Not only is he playing football, doing something he loves and contributing, he's uh, enjoying the area. Uh, despite being a kicker on the depth chart, and you do see him kick it with plenty of distance through the back of the end zone, the Fratman extending their lead to 10 nothing. He is maybe the best athlete the Fratman have on their squad all around. Coach Lachance has already alluded to the fact that he was an accomplished receiver in the BC League, and he has an arm that can probably range about 55, 60 yards in throwing. Uh, he runs well, he looks the type, but given the opportunity, as you said, to be with the BC Lions, he's going to focus his opportunity to play professional football and really yep. hone in on his kicking skills. Primarily his place kicking and kickoff, not so much punting, but because he's so talented, he also serves the punting mm -hmm. responsibilities here, which saves you a dress roster spot. Some teams have to actually draw dress a place kicker and a punter. This one allows you to get a more versatile player on the roster. Good points, Buddy. Nick Morissette uh, back deep for the Beef Eaters to take Steven Schott's kick. Schott makes it 10 0 AKO. And as you can see, just 2.17 to go here in the second quarter. Schott boots it right. Bobbled there. Finally scooped up by the Beef Eaters and. 
out to about the 25 yard line and that's where London takes over the ball. We got a little extracurricular activity here after the whistle. I'm gonna be a little critical here, first of all, of the decision. After a successful field goal in Canada, the offense has the opportunity to scrimmage from the 35 yard line. There has been no indication that the beefy to return has been any good. That coverage unit for the Fradman has been outstanding. So that in itself, the return only got to the, about the 23 yard line, which means you lost 12 yards on that exchange. At the tail end of that, as you said, there was a multitude of flags being thrown and it looked like it was a beef eater who was the one, the driving force at the bottom of that, trying to pick up and not let go of a Fratman ankle. And if that is indeed the case, as you see the conference here, and you're gonna get Mr. Schroeder who's going to give us all the calls here. We have an unnecessary roughness. It says indicate against the Fratman, one against the beef eaters. So it's going to wash them. But either way, you see where the ball is set up right now and the beef eaters lost time and 10 yards right now on the exchange. Yep. And they need it as they're down 10 nothing to the Fratman. First and 10 for London. It looks like they will scrimmage from their 26. You saw referee Jay Schroeder there making the calls and talk about a history of refereeing. His father, of course, Jack, a uh, member of the Sports Hall of Fame. Uh, we lost Jack earlier this year as well. Uh, it's been a rough year for the sports community, but uh, Jay following in the footsteps of his uh, wonderful father and outstanding official, just an outstanding athletic man. And uh, Jack would be here on uh, normal circumstances, but uh, he's in a better place watching from up above. And certainly great to see Jay carrying on the tradition though for the Schroeder family. And it was nice, one last thing for Jack. He was the honorary referee for the coin flip in the Eastern Canadian final last year, which was outstanding for him to be a part of it for his storied history, as you said, countless years. Uh, you'll see Jay, his son right now, he's conferencing coach from London, is asking for yeah. a little explanation. Yeah, well, well, the coaches always want to chat. So while we have some time, let's go down to field level. Uh, that's where Becca Luden is working hard. And I believe she's got some information for us, Becca. With just over two minutes left in the half for the AKO and London Beef Eaters, the AKO is leading 10 nothing. As for other games around the league, the Braves move to 2 and 0 with a 24-21 win over the Twin City Predators. And as for Hamilton, their perfect streak has come to an end as the Ottawa Sooners topped them 9-8 earlier this afternoon. That's all for down here on the field with your around the league update. Now back to Dom up in the booth for the rest of the first half. Great information, Becca. Thanks for uh, getting us that uh, out of town scoreboard. 9 8, Buddy. <laughs> I don't know. I've, 9 8 in Canadian football just doesn't seem possible. And you look at Hamilton going into week four here, they scored 107 points in their first three games. I mean, that's 36 points a game, and they're held to eight points at home against an Ottawa team that we saw last week that we've thought was maybe a little banged up. So full marks to the Sooners though to bounce back after a tough loss here and really help their own cause. I'm not actually too surprised of the score. Hamilton is based on their defenses here. They have a very good veteran outstanding linebacking crew. So it doesn't quite surprise me. Although the score is peculiar. Nine to eight, wow. Wall keeps it and he doesn't get very far. Boy, that AKO defense has really turned up the heat, buddy. And that's just a time clock uh, play. You know the London sideline wants to get that clock ticking. They, they're they very, very lucky that it's only 10 nothing right now. And if they could go into the half at 10 nothing, they would take it. So this play is gonna be whistled in. They're probably gonna use the full 20 seconds. And you might see the Fratman if they stop them here on second down, if it is indeed on the ground or a completed catch short of the first down, you will likely see them use a timeout. Beef Eaters lose a yard there, second and 11. Wall hands off to number 24, Travis Ryan, and Ryan just nowhere to go. Again, the Fratman defense just stifling right now. And the biggest mistake that could have happened for the Beef Eaters is the tackle was out of bounds, yep, which means the, the clock, clock is gonna stop and the Fratman don't have to burn that time nope. out. <laughs> you have to know where you are on the field and you have to understand the dynamic of the game. At this point in time, the runner should have realized, hey, I can't get around this corner. Fall down. You're gonna not get the first down either way. At least force the Fratman to get that 
play. Well, Actually, they whistled it in. I thought it was signaled out of bounds, but I guess the tackle played in bounds. Well, we're, we're miles away from the play, Badi, here, and that's not to make excuses. It's just reality. Low punt handled here by the Fratman. They will have good field position as they're to the London. Looks like uh, we got a late flag by referee Schroeder roughing against the, the beef eaters. eaters. So this is going to help the Fratman cause. Originally, they were going to scrimmage at the London 48. They're going to tack on a few more yards here. Actually, now the signal was the other way. It was a late hit against. Okay, they did the signal Fratman. the beef eaters first. <laughs> And so it is against the Fratman, so that helps the beef eaters cause. Jay and throwing me a curveball there, Billy. And we know that player safety is a concern. We're not exactly sure what he saw. Actually, the indication is a pile on, so it must have been a late after the play was already done. Somebody pushed into the pile, dived on the pile, uh, hit somebody in the back on the pile. So. so that definitely helps the London cause as the Fratman now back at their own 48. Instead of starting at the London 48, they go back to their own 48, first and 10. 125 to go. Lumley, a couple steps back, looks over the middle. That pass almost picked off. It was intended for Kyle McGinnis, but uh, stepping up for the beef eaters. Yeah, you got to get that ball over the top a little bit more, a little more air on it. If that's a big tight end, you might want to get it on him a little bit more. Long receiver might be able to make a play, but you get a shorter receiver who's got some speed. You definitely want to get that ball in the air and over the top so that the receiver can run under it. It was a little bit underthrown. Fortunately for the Fratman, it didn't result in the fourth turnover of the game. Second and 10 now for AKO. That play takes five seconds off the clock, 120 to go. Three receivers to the right of Lumley. Play action, Lumley a couple steps back, looks over there, picked off! This time the beef eaters do come up with it, and that is Tyler Annan, number 25. And the worst thing that could have happened just happened. They're, they dodge a bullet on the last play with a turnover, but this time around you get a turnover on your side of the field with a minute and change left, giving the beef eaters an opportunity. But you do have a beef eater down it's Annan, on the actually, ground. Buddy. It's the uh, player that intercepted the ball, Tyler Annan, shaken up on the play after the uh, tackle. And it was just a nice play here on the replay. He stepped in front of it. They did a little bit of a play action. So you're going to see Austin give a little bit of a play fake as he steps back and he sets. He's throwing the ball over the middle, but he just did not see number 25 and then the linebacker who just sort of had some good depth realizing the situation. Hey, it's definitely going to be a pass. I'm going to get into some sort of passing lane. He stepped right in front of it. Looked like Monahan, who was the intended receiver, and it, actually an easy interception yep. for him. And you see the result with the beef eaters are going to be set in the Fratman territory. John Moynihan, actually, number nine, the intended receiver, as Bede mentions. Coming up at the uh, halftime, Becca Luden will be busy. She'll get uh, a couple of the coaches, one from each team anyways, uh, to get their perspective on this first half of football. We'll check in with our in-studio analysts, Adam Morrison and Joel Manerick, uh, and uh, get their thoughts about the first half. Uh, we'll check that out of town scoreboard again for you one more time and hopefully we get you some of the numbers from the first half of this contest one thing that stands out for sure buddy is the four turnovers by AKO yeah and despite that they Still have up. a 10 nothing lead mm -hmm. the defense is doing their part the special teams are playing quite solid Here right now applause, and the offense five. with if you just eliminate the four turnovers they're getting first downs they're running the ball well they're actually controlling the pace of play from a force unit perspective but these turnovers are a concern and now uh, last week you saw a quick poll with uh, Austin with Drake Sunderland but Drake mm -hmm. Sunderland is not an option this nope. week after suffering an injury in last week's game so that is not an option for the Fratman offense right now Andrew Downer would be the backup quarterback number 14 for the Fratman. A lot of good hitting going on there in that run. Yeah, and the beef eaters just lined up with everyone in the line of scrimmage, and they were just trying to get inch forward. I'm not sure if they have a kicker with a long leg, but this looks like, hey, we're gonna try to get maybe a first down, keep running this clock, kick the field goal if we have to. 
but don't be surprised if you see a bootleg right now. A full-blown inside run fake with the quarterback going off the edge right now. Second and eight for the Bee Feeders. Under a minute to go here in the first half. Wall under center this time. He hands off to Stewart. Stewart with a nice run, and he looks like he's got the first down for the Bee Feeders. Very powerful run. Like you said, Stewart did getting the first down. He kept his shoulders square and wasn't impeded as he got through the line of scrimmage. And you get London using a first time out now, realizing that they are actually inside the scoring zone, making sure that they get the maximum number of plays with the time left on the clock. Yeah, 45 seconds remaining here. And the Beefeaters will scrimmage first and 10 at the 34 you look at the moon here tonight in southwestern ontario a beautiful evening unfolding here a nice crowd here at the stadium as you can see and we're just happy to be bringing you exciting ofc football here on we-tv.ca fratman will hit the road next week it'll take on the gta grizzlies who are 0-3 bye week for them this week but obviously a much needed bye week for them so we uh, certainly look at it as a winnable game for the Fratman, but you take nothing for granted. GTA is going to have time to make adjustments, take a look at film, and uh, certainly put together, a, I'm sure, a solid effort and uh, contest with the AKO Fratman. Quick handoff here. And the answer Peters. last week was Jake Nicoletti, and this time yeah. what they do is they walk him up into the box in that run-heavy set and they say, good, we're gonna bring one of our best defenders into the box, and he made a sure-handed tackle, limiting the gain to two and a half yards. And like you were talking about GTA, although they haven't won a game, when you have to travel and you don't know your injury status, if somebody gets hurt in the rest of this game, you can't take any wins for granted in this nope. league. Nope, especially on the road, it's never easy. Wall, looking over the middle, he finds a target. That's number 18, Andrew Oroskovich. Oroskovich gets the first down and then some. The Beefeaters looking to get on the scoreboard before the half is out. They'll have a first and 10 situation as the ball will be marked at about the 11 yard line. Great catch, great run, great subsequent blocking. And it looks like it's the receiver. Another playmaker for the Beefeaters who made a play is down as the Beefeaters are set up <laughs> just outside the 10 yard line. One thing AKO does, Badi, make you pay, for the pay the price for receiving the ball. Yeah, and the middle of the field in Canada is so wide. And if you have a quarterback who has the time to step up and can see the middle of the field, those dragging routes, like he just came squared in from the right to the left, caught the ball in stride, made one guy miss, and next thing you know, you get a convoy of blockers up the left hash, setting that edge and picking up, I think it was about a 30 yard gain in total. So here's the situation. Yes, we do have the London player, as Bidi mentioned, it was the receiver that time, Andrew Oroskevich, the shaken up beef feeder player, but uh, London down to the AQ, 11 yard down, 11 yard line I should say they're down 11 nothing in the contest or 10 nothing in the contest and 19 seconds remaining in the first half so they're thinking touchdown right now I think first Biddy. well you definitely want the touchdown and you're almost going to see a conservative play followed up by a semi-conservative play and what I mean by that is you're going to get an inside run here and then you're probably going to get a run pass option where the quarterback might sprint out or bootleg and he might not throw unless it's wide open. Of course a long rivalry here, a long history of uh, action between London and you look at the last 10 meetings, these two teams have gone 5-5 five and five, buddy, uh, you know the London has, uh, Windsor has outscored them 20, 264 to 171 but doesn't matter it's been one, uh, you know 5-5, five and five. last meeting of course was last season, London winning that one Windsor did come back and defeated the Bee Feeders 24 to seven, I believe in the other contest. So uh, a historic rivalry, no doubt in the Ontario Football Conference, a, a good one. And uh, you know, they go up the 401. Anytime a London-Windsor game comes about, it doesn't matter if it's football, baseball, basketball, hockey, it's going to be intense. Absolutely, and it's one of those rides that it's so short that you still you almost consider this whole southwestern Ontario your backyard. 
and you don't want to give up your turf. Even so though you're going rights. to London, yeah, yeah, there are some bragging rights there. So you're looking at it saying, hey, you're coming here. We're going to eventually go to you later. But guess what? We want to win both. So if you, we have to see each other a third time in the playoffs, come back to us. Come back home, which we are considering Windsor Stadium here, and uh, do your due diligence. Like, hey, come beat us on our field if you can. Yeah, it was in August of last year that AKO beat London 24 to seven, if I'm staying corrected. Flag on the play as London loses some yards there, maybe about nine yards to be exact. Yeah, and then London. you get a hold, so it's all in all, they haven't had the speed to run to the edge, and the one play they've been running well is that inside power play. This time they opt to go to a pitch, and it gets absolutely nothing out of it, and now the options are going to be decline the penalty, which is a valid option right now because you've already lost six yards on the play as it stands, and make it second down. Don't give them an extra play. So we're just waiting to see what the result of it is. And it does indeed look like the hold is going to be declined. So it's going to bring up a second down and real long right now because they pretty much have to score. Yeah, second and 20 is what it is basically, Biddy. As they lose nine. Going to the end zone. You called it, Biddy. Touchdown, B-Feeders. As holding on to that ball was Christian Ridley, number 87. You called it though, Badi. They got to go to the end zone with it, and they did indeed do that. Yeah, and it was a straight go route. The slot receiver, and he looks like a tall body, a tall, rangy body. Quarterback just threw one up. Wasn't a perfect or a great throw, but he trusted his receiver to go up and get it. And the turnovers are really, really going to be a factor if they continue this way because you've let the beef eaters hang around and they're going to feel great because this is going to be the last play of the half, this extra kick, which the extra point is good. It's going to be 10-7. And we're going to see a replay here. And you'll see the quarterback pretty much just drop three steps, his back foot hits, and he throws it up. He knows he's got a big slot receiver and his big slot receiver comes down with it. And I mean, if you're the frat man, that's Jake Nicoletti in coverage. You don't mind that situation. You got a good coverage man on it, but you've let a team hang around and you're only up three. Fortunately, you're up actually, given the fact that you've turned the ball over four times already. Absolutely, and uh, it does set up an interesting second half though for us, Biddy, an outstanding game unfolding here. You don't want to leave. You want to watch the rest of this one because it's going to be tight. So that is indeed the score at halftime. The Windsor Hill Fratman 10, the London Beef Eaters 7. We are into our halftime. We're going to take a timeout. We'll come back with Becca Luden, and we'll also have our OFC football analyst in studio to recap this first half of play. You are watching AKO Fratman Football on we-tv.ca. Aboriginal youth have a desire to create, learn, and grow. No computer, no future. One laptop, one child at a time, one simple gesture. Give a kid a chance. Let's help give them the tools to succeed. Let's buy a child a laptop. Do yourself a favor. Go online. Check it out. I got a laptop! Find out how you can help. Visit the website today. More than 13 million volunteers contribute over 2 billion hours every year. Volunteers support us in everything we do, and communities thrive because of it. At Volunteer Canada, we encourage and strengthen community involvement. 
we work with a broad range of partners to promote and support our shared vision of a vibrant Canada. To learn more, visit the new volunteer.ca, your connection to Canada's volunteering community. Take one empty field, round up a group of players, add three bases, plus one home plate, throw in a softball, and add an umpire. Play ball! It's not hard to get a game of softball going and to keep it going from the time you're four till you're 84. Sidelines at the ha at halftime of the London Beef Eaters in Windsor AKO with Jamie McCurdy from the Windsor AKO Fratman. He's the special teams coordinator as well as the running back coach. So a good start to the game. First team to get points on the board. So how's that feel? Feels great, but we left a lot of points on the field. We didn't execute as, as well as we should have. We really, really, really are going to tighten it up going into the second half. Now, second, first, first half didn't end so well with uh, London finally getting some points on the board. So do you think that's going to kickstart them, or your, is your defense already playing strong and be able to hold them off? No, we're much better than them. We've made a lot of mistakes. We're going to go in, fix those mistakes, and come out and put this game where it should be. Now, last week you had an amazing fourth quarter. Do you think that kind of kick-started for this week? And amazing first half as well, so that's going to keep, keep it rolling? Well, absolutely, but let's, we're, still, we're still sputtering a little bit in the first half. We'd like to put together four quarters and finish one of these games as we should and get a lot more players in. Perfect. Have a, have a the good rest of the game. I appreciate it. Thank you. No you plan problem. on it. Thank you. Now back to the guys in the booth with Dom. Rachel, I never realized that your mother suffered from lupus. Yeah, it is a chronic disease, and I've seen my mom go through long-term remissions, and then I've seen her almost die. Um, so I really hope they can find a cure so other people don't have to go through this. There are more than 50,000 Canadians living with lupus, and this number increases each year. To learn more about lupus and how you can help, go to lupuscanada.org. Fratman holding on to a 10-7 lead over the beef feeders. Joel Manerick, Adam Morrison, our OFC analyst, uh, joining us here at the halftime report. And you know what, guys? We listened to Coach McCurdy there, and he said that they left a lot of points on the field. And you know what? You look at those four turnovers. Those are huge. I mean, they're lucky to be really ahead, I'd say, at 10-7 at this point. Yeah, absolutely. And also, you know, London's dropped a couple of interceptions as well, so there could be six six turnovers in that first half. Uh, just a good thing that London hasn't been able to execute offensively as well. Mm. But that goes back to, you look at that AKO defense, which has been, I think, outstanding here uh, this evening. Despite giving up the seven points late in the half there, they've been pretty solid, and I think maybe that is the reason why they're holding on to a 10-7 lead. Oh, Tom, absolutely. That, I mean, that's by far the reason. Now, we talked about uh, hopefully that they weren't going to have to carry the momentum and carry the, the energy of the team, but, uh, you know, the offense coming out a little bit flat, occasional drives here and there, but it uh, looks like they're going to have to bear that load for the rest of the game, and hopefully they, they can uh, bear down and make that happen. A lot of the focal point guys is going to be at Austin Lumley, the quarterback of AQ. Of course, Sunderland's out, uh, so you don't have him to go to, and uh, we've seen Coach Shots use both these guys throughout games. He's, no, uh, he's uh, done that before, but he doesn't have that option here tonight with Sunderland being out. What do you think of uh, Lumley's performance up to this point? Uh, it's been spotty. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's done some good things out there, but then he's also really getting himself uh, really focused on the first receiver. He does not well, he doesn't seem to be able to coming off that first receiver, going to his second progressions, and uh, it's kind of stuck him. He's, you know, he's, he's thrown two, should have thrown four interceptions that first half. All right. Yeah. Go ahead, Adam. Go ahead if you want to follow up. From a defensive coach's standpoint and a, you know, a defensive back standpoint, it's, you know, he's making things easy for them. 
like I said, he's, you know, he's eyeing people down, not really checking people off, and unless he's outside of the pocket, uh, you know, he's not really even looking to a second receiver at all. So and I'd be interested to see how the adjustment happens and how London continues to take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. Well, you lead me right into my next question where we got to go with this one. Uh, of course, uh, before we continue on, guys, here, let's go back outside to uh, Becca to the field. I think she does have one of the uh, London coaches. We'll come back for your comments. Let's hear what the London Bee Feeders have to say. Let's throw it out to Becca. I'm now here on the field with Ryan Clutterbuck, the offensive coordinator for the London Bee Feeders. Now, you kind of had a slow start again this week, much like last week, but you finally got some points on the board at the end of that second quarter. So what kind of changes do you need to make going into the second half? Uh, well, unfortunately, we lost our quarterback in the third play of the game, so we're trying to get our, our backup chuck up to speed as quickly as possible. Uh, defense is doing a great job keeping us in the game, and they're going to have to play well in the second half. Now, you mentioned the quarterback out early in the game. A couple of other injuries there as well, so what kind of effect do they have on, their, on the rest of the team? Uh, we've had some guys go down with some pretty serious injuries. We lost uh, Andrew there just towards the end, uh, probable ACL. Um, so again, it just means other guys have to step up. You know, guys that didn't get a ton of reps in practice are going to have to make plays for us. And uh, that's what we're going to need in the second half. All right. Now, what are your expectations for the team coming together, even though despite all of those injuries going into the second half? Just to play hard and not give up. Our defense is playing outstanding. They're going to give us a chance. And we just have to believe and we're going to get it done. All right. Thank you. And have a good second half. Thank you. That's all for here on the field for the halftime show. Currently, AKO leading 10-7. I'll send it back to Dom in the booth for the rest of the second for the rest of the game. Thanks a lot, Becca. So again, you know, London battling with a little bit of the injury bug, uh, and you know that's going to hurt, obviously. But uh, you know what? I think the late score really has got to give them a shot in the arm, guys. And then certainly, you come out in the third quarter, you have to think right now that maybe the beef eaters with the momentum. Yeah, you would think so. Uh, they really. Couldn't move the ball too much in that first half, and then they get a late turnover, able to get gain some momentum from that and score in that last play of the half. So yeah, if they can ride that into the second half, they're looking pretty well. Mm -hmm. What do you think of London's performance? You know, even with some of the uh, injuries and in the like, the coach mentioned to some pretty key players. Uh, what I like to see from them is when things weren't working. You know, they mixed up the offense a little bit. They started to go back to a little bit more bringing people in the box, a little bit more power run, uh, which you know what caught IQ off guard, I think, in that drive. So let's look for them to mix it up a little bit more. Um, you know, hopefully get some uh, tight passes in there as well. But uh, you know, uh, having them come in and out of that game, keeping the the power, I think, is going to be a key for them if they're looking to win the game. All right. I'm going to get into your coaching minds now, guys. Of course, uh, we want to get uh, our viewers into maybe what the ref or what the uh, head coaches are saying to the guys. Got a tight game here, 10-7. Uh, it's anybody's game up to this point. Uh, if you're Coach uh, Lachance, what are you telling your guys, Joe? Uh, we need to execute a little bit better. Uh, you know, we got to ex expand our offense a little bit. They did. They did some nice things where they went double tight end. They ran some power. Got got Juma loose on a few plays. They, they've given the Cody McCann the ball a few times, which is nice to see. Uh, he's, I think he's their leading rusher in this first half, and he's got their touchdown. I think if they feed Cody a little bit more, that'll set up their play-action pass. Mm -hmm. If you're Coach Vuvalatis, what are you telling your guys in the, the London room, Adam? Well, right now I'm letting them know that uh, you know we're, we're in this game, mm -hmm. and I'm letting them know that we do carry the momentum right now. Uh, we had them on their heels in that last drive, and uh, you know we need to do now is the same as AKO is going to say. Is it's time to execute, but it's also not time to let that momentum go. We've got to keep it in our hands, and we've got to make sure that we carry that through the first uh, quarter. And you know what? They need to get out there and uh, score in their first drive. Okay, what do you need to absolutely see happen, guys, for the AKO Fratman in the second half? I know you mentioned a couple of things, but who's the guy, the one guy that you may want to have to step up and really take charge of this game for the Fratman? Well, it always comes down to the quarterback. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, it seems like Austin gets into a game and, and, you know, some bad things happen, but he always bounces back and seems to respond to that. So hopefully in the second half that Austin Lumley will be able to bounce back and do what he did last week. Yeah, he showed that he could do it, obviously, and it was in a pretty tough situation. They were down against Ottawa, and he uh, did help uh, spearhead that comeback along with Jake Nicoletti on the defensive side. Who are you leaning towards, Adam? Well, you know, I'm going to be in the same bucket there. I'm definitely going to be leaning toward the QB, but I'm also going to be taking a look at uh, the offensive line. I mean, they've, uh, you know, had some opportunities to, uh, you know, see some blitzes, some see some different uh, situations from uh, from the London uh, defense. But uh, you know, definitely the offensive line and the quarterback is going to be the key for the next uh, the next uh, 30 minutes out there. All right, uh, we're going to get away from this game for just a moment. Uh, we do have two other games going on this evening. They're both finals now. Uh, 
surprising scores, I'm going to say. Burlington does defeat the Tri-City Predators 24-21, so the Braves improved to 2-1. The Predators fall to 1-2. and two. The other game was in Hamilton. It was the Hurricanes going into that game with a perfect 3-0 and o record, taking on the Ottawa Sooners at 1-1. One one. The Sooners, of course, we saw them here last week. Ottawa pulls off a huge victory in Hamilton, winning 9-8, so they helped their cause uh, for a playoff picture. But a 9-8 score, <laughs> how do you come up with 9-8 score in Canadian football? And, of course, Hamilton going into that game was averaging 36 points a game, so obviously Ottawa's defense really stepped up. Well, if you could just mirror it to the Ottawa Red Blacks when yeah. they played 7-5 <laughs> against BC. <laughs> so I guess they're, they're, they're taking their cue from uh, the professional team in yeah. town. But, yeah, a good, nice win by Ottawa coming back down to southern Ontario and, and taking care of business and a bounce-back win. Yeah, and now uh, they improved to 2-1. and one. That win, the Burlington win, uh, I'm not going to say it puts a lot of pressure on AKO and London, but certainly, you know what, you look at it, and uh, it's becoming that cluster there. Tri-City now falling down a little bit here. There's, it's going to be tough for them to bounce back, but maybe a little more pressure on both London and AKO here to find a victory to keep pace at 2-1. and one. Well, I gotta say, my prediction didn't pull through there with uh, with the Predators, <laughs> but uh, you know, we we didn't want to say anything to you, Adam, but <laughs> now that you mention it, <laughs> hey, you know what? I'll own up to that. But uh, that know, means he's buying, Joe. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, you know what? I'm up for that. All right. Yeah. Uh, but that's okay. So, I mean, you know what? You're you're new to the broadcast. Hey, you know what? I think I owe one anyway, right, guys? So <laughs> it's all a learning curve. Here, hey, Adam. all right. Just, we'll uh, take Joe's, that. Joe's got a couple years on you <laughs> broadcast experience, so it's a tough uh, tough outfit to work with here. Hey, so. you know what? If we put that, at least we all we all chose Hamilton as well. <laughs> so. Yes, we did. That's right. So we're, we're all all, th all three of us struck out there. But uh, interesting night of uh, football, absolutely. and we still got some great football here at the Windsor Stadium. It's the uh, AKO Fratman and the London Bee Feeders. 10-7, AKO leads the Bee Feeders after the first half. We're going to take a timeout. When we come back, we'll get set for the second half kickoff. You're watching OFC Football on we-tv.ca. Adding new products or services to your brochure? Updating those drab business cards? Or looking to create a striking window display? In need of some screen printed signs for that construction site or promotional campaign? Posters, vehicle wraps, and a whole lot more. At Angel Star Digital, our expert design and production team are ready to meet all your promotional needs. For samples of our work, check out our website at www.angelstardigital.com or you can call us at 519-969-0712. That's 519-969-0712. The first kiss. She's thinking about a million things, like should I lean in? Or let him? Do I close my eyes or open them? But for him, he's only thinking about one thing. Did she have peanut butter for lunch? Welcome back to Windsor Stadium, the site of OFC football, week number four. Game number three for the AKO Fratman as they are taking on the London Bee Feeders. Dominic Papa, along with Badia Quas, our head producer director Steve Bell, and the hard working crew here at we-tv.ca bringing you all the action. 10 7 our score, second half just underway between the Bee Feeders and the Fratman. Lumley hands off quickly here. First play of the second half. D, lots up for grabs here. And uh, you gotta figure London's gotta be feeling pretty good about themselves right now, getting that score late in the first half and carrying some of that momentum over here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, second place for Elisa Fradman is up for grabs right on those standings. And in this case scenario, the game is obviously very, very tight. London can come into Windsor and steal one if the Fradman keep turning the ball over like they did in the first half. Well, you know what? Uh, we, we just announced the out-of-town scoreboard as Juma with the run here. He's going to be short of the first down yards needed, probably about three and a half yards short. So it's going to be second down, or third down, and three for the Fratman. The punt unit comes in for Coach LaChance. But uh, Ottawa winning in Hamilton, 9-8. Uh, Burlington taking care of business at home against the Tri-City Predators, 24-21. Burlington now 2-1. Ottawa now 2-1. Hamilton falls to 3-1. Tri-Cities falls to 1-2. The Fratman go to GTA next week, who are still looking for their first victory. But they got to take care of business here tonight. 
unquestionably and take care of the ball is what we should say, taking care of business is. Shots punt, a good one. Sends the beef eaters back to their own 22 yard line. Derek Coleman, I believe that is, number 31, still up on his feet. A good job by Derek Coleman. Second effort gets the beef eaters out to, looks like almost the 45 yard line. And for the first time, the Fratman coverage just wasn't there. There were some early hands on him, but uh, ball carrier going full speed, hands and arms aren't gonna likely take him down. You gotta get your body in a good position and finish the tackle. And like you said, he crosses the 40 yard line and sets the beef eaters who have the momentum carried over from the first half and an early stop defensively are in position in the uh, middle of the field. Ball at the 43, first and 10. Wall's pass is complete as he finds Aaron Stora Nelson, his first touch of the game. Yeah, and once again earlier, it was mentioned that the starting quarterback for the beef feeders was knocked out, so you got a young man coming in who's a backup who is looking to move this offense and give the beef feeders a chance to win. Again, a nice second effort by Dwayne Stewart. And I think with that effort, but he gets the yards for a first down. And yes, the sticks are on the move. Yeah, the Fratman had hands on him in the backfield. The design of the play was to go to the left, but he made a first tackler miss, spun out of it, and worked his way back up the right hash and moved the ball right to midfield. Beefeaters picking up where they left off. They're now to the midfield stripe, the 55 yard line. First and 10, we're just underway here. Third quarter action, the Fratman. The Fratman holding on to a three point lead. This time carrying the ball, that's Nick Morrison. And he picks up six or seven yards. So London doing a very effective job. And effective is a very good word for it because they are trying to stay in their own rhythm with making sure they hand the ball off, patiently do the read option. Eventually you're gonna see a big play up from the quarterback on a read option like that. Second and two, they're gonna call it. And this is more suit again, but uh, he's going nowhere. In fact, he loses some yards. And a good job this time by the Fremen defense stretching the play out. You force Morissette to turn his shoulders running to the sideline. He could never get downhill. And as you said, it l loses yardage and just going to force a punt. But the beef eaters did do something they wanted. They crossed midfield, got a couple good running plays in, got a first down. And again, if there's any wind, it is in their favor right mm -hmm. now. And maybe they can pin the Fratman deep. Slight breeze, but nothing really, I think, where it affects the game a lot, Badi. Uh, it is working in favor of the beef eaters right now, but uh, again, nothing near what we were dealing with last week, that's for sure. Nice cool night here, actually, in Windsor. Here's the punt. This is going to be Neary, I believe, for the Fratman. He misses, a, lose a couple of tackles, and he gets out to about the 20 yard line. AKO first and 10. So early on, that's a good exchange if you're the London Beef Eaters. You stop the Fratman, two and out. You get the ball back. You get about 20 total yards of offense. You move it up into the midfield stripe just across. And you force the Fratman to go uh, the length of the field, pretty much 20 yard line in Canada means you still got a whole lot of yards to go. And that 90 yard is something that the Fratman pulled off at the end of the game last year. Last week, excuse me, maybe they can do it again. Big push there, straight ahead for the Fratman. First and 10 from their own 30. And that was that Donkers was 20, who just- actually, wasn't it? Yes, from their 20. And that was Donkers who just lowered his shoulder. Uh, a good first down run, picked up six yards, second down and four. And now the play call, I know Coach Lachance is gonna try to get in his playmaker's hand, so I wouldn't be surprised to see something quick to McGinnis or possibly to Holmes again. Okay, well, let's see. And here is the quick handoff to McCann. Or is that, again, that number 25 and 23? It is 25. Okay, so that's Donkers. <laughs> I apologize, folks. Donkers. You know, we are at a very rough vantage point here. And uh, that 25 and 23 just goes blowing through like that. 
It's hard to uh, pick up at times, but uh, we'll give Donkers the credit because he deserves it. And, and we'll give the it. offensive line a little bit of credit. Sure. They're moving the pile there right now. They are actually taking control of the game early in this second quarter, or excuse me, second half. 9-10 and counting down here. At that time, the beef eaters were ready for the handoff. I believe that was Donkers one more time. Yes, it was. He maybe got a yard there, but he, I think they'll credit him for a yard, a yard and a half, perhaps. We'll yep. call it one yard and is nine. good. Yep. And we'll call it second and nine. Again, you, you lose, you don't get a big play there, but because of the success they're having running inside, you're going to get something off of play action real soon. It might not be this down because no one's going to really buy a second and nine run, but it's going to open up something on a first down real soon, and maybe Austin Lumley can make something happen with a quick play action pass to his playmakers. There's the quick handoff to McCann, that trap play, and McCann, boy, oh, boy, does he ever run that well, buddy. And that's just going back to the old-time playbook. I coached with Coach LaChance a lot of years, and when it's second down and nine, you don't expect that inside trap. It's a quick hitter, and Cody has proven he is running that as well as anyone who's run trap here, and he hits it big yardage well into the beef eater territory. They get down to the London 39, first and 10. They are on the move, 750 and counting down, third quarter. And they go to the well again. They run trap. They just run it the other way this time. Mm -hmm. And the beef eaters are maybe a little more prepared for it. They do have a run set in, especially on first down when run is more of a viable option. But now you put yourself in that second and seven-ish. Seven. Yep. And you can still run the ball, obviously. And you can bootleg. You can play action off of it. I wouldn't be surprised if you saw Austin sprint out this time to his right because there were a couple plays early in that first half that there were just some wide open people, namely Steven Russo. Second and seven is what we are calling it. And this is Donkers. Donkers with a huge run. He has the first down for the Fratman, down to the Donkers London 25. And again, that first down run, even though it's only a little over three yards, the linemen are getting some push, and it's giving Coach shots an opportunity to still call a run. There's nothing fancy, no trickery going on there. He's just letting the big guys up front uh, make some plays, and they, that's exactly what they're doing. And they're going both right and left at this point in time, which is tremendous balance if you're an offensive coordinator. Fratman first and 10 at the London 25. Six and a half to go. Oh, that time, I believe it's McCann falling on his own. He slipped up. Yeah, he, uh, he ran that trap once again, and he was trying to square up to run through somebody there, and he lost his footing, and he wasn't able to get any momentum going forward. And you'll see here on the replay that the reverse pivot from quarterback Austin Lumley and the jab set from the running back, and he just gets vertical, and he was about to lower his shoulder into a guy, and he just lost his balance there. Does pick up seven, though, buddy, and it's second and three for the AKO Fratman at the London 17. This is Donkers. Fights off a tackle, and he's close to the first down. We'll see where they spot it. This may, may need the sticks to come in. We'll see. Yeah, it was a close play, and good on Donkers because there was a shooting linebacker through there. He made the first guy miss, and it looks like he's about a half yard short. They need it to clearly... Yep. Uh, advance the ball past the 15-yard line, and they're just short of the 15-yard line. So here's that Rhino set. Yeah, offense stays in for Coach LaChance. The big push, and Lumley holds on, and you know what? It's all up to the officials now, buddy. <laughs> so it is all up to the back. officials, and it looks like Mr. McDonald uh, is about a yard past the 15-yard line, which would easily give them. You don't have to get five. Right. You only have to get one, and That's they right. got the one. A good push there. Fratman have done that two or three times tonight, and it's been successful. We do have a Fratman down on the field right now, and it looks like it's one of their linemen. Number 50 looks like the number. That would be DeMarcus Ware. And he's a rookie lineman who is their right guard, and he has played well this season, a big presence inside, I believe, out of Herman. Yep. And it looks like he's holding his elbow, maybe his shoulder, 
Uh, he is a tough kid. I, I'd expect him probably be back real soon. Maybe got a stinger, you know, that helmet on the elbow. You don't have any padding or protection <laughs> there. And you see uh, the team trainer, Chappie, there just bringing him out. And Jason Chappieski, yeah, you got it. Along with Sean Haskett. And he's, he's rolling it up. Yep. So they're going to bring in their backup linemen here, maybe get a quick water break for both teams. And hopefully that doesn't disturb the rhythm of the run game because they have been running it real well. And you're in the scoring zone right now, so you yep. really don't want any substitutions at any point with your offensive linemen, specifically when you're in the scoring zone. They list where at 6'4", 315. And he is an athletic 315. Like, yep. I mean, he, it's not sloppy. He's a, just a big boy. Comes from that outstanding product of the Herman Green Griffins High School. This is Donkers again inside the five. Still up, still Donkers pushing. Turning, twisting, going, running. And he is inside the five. He'll have a first down by the looks of it. Or will he be about a yard short maybe? And I bet you the beef eaters didn't think that they were going to run right behind where left because they ran right behind the right guard and it looked like it was their backup number 69 who came in for the Fratman. And I, I think that's Joe, and I'm not sure exactly. Yeah, it's Joseph Muhammad who went in for him and they're calling for the sticks to come out as you yep. said it's going to be real close but the momentum you get from that as you saw on that last play you saw donkers drive his feet and then you see the lineman realize that he's still up so they keep hustling down the field these big hogs they don't get enough credit for their ability to get downfield speaking of giving credit buddy we want to give some credit and love to the uh, pizza king gang providing our crew meal as the fratman get a first down you can check them out at 2347 Paulette Road uh, for the best pie in town. Give the king a ring. Uh, numerous specials throughout the week. Check them out at 519-944-2201. Uh, Thanks to Ron and Mito Martinello for helping our, us out here on game day on we-tv.ca. First down and goal for the Fratmen. Nice drive here. They've chewed up some of the clock and now threatening to increase their lead. Hand off to Donkers and a nice defensive play there by the Beef Eaters. Keeps Donkers out of the end zone. Yeah, and at some point, uh, somebody on that London defense is going to have to make a stick, make a play. Uh, They've already created some turnovers, but in this drive, they got to have somebody who makes a penetrating play where it negates the forward steam. Even though that was a uh, only a, a half yard gain, the Fragment can still run the ball. They got their whole O line pushed in. They run wedge, Rhino, and Austin Lumley walks into Stand, the yep. end zone right there. Fratman. And, and that's as simple as that. They're three and a half yards from the end zone. And the offensive line, they love that confidence from their head coach. They see that they need three and a half yards. We're just going to squeeze everything in, wedge it all the way to the end zone, and Austin Umley walks. He, the, the beef eaters weren't even expecting a rhino wedge there from that package that the Fratman put in. Nice call. No need to really uh, do anything fancy in that scenario, and that's exactly what it was. It paid off. Point after coming up here. And we'll talk about it. Just wait to see if Steve Schott's successful here. Fratman now up 16-7, looking to make it 17. Snaps good. Kick is up, good. and it's through. More importantly, though, Badi, I thought London came out pretty good in that first part of the third quarter here, coming off the uh, late drive in the first half, and a nice response by the Fratman as we take a look at the touchdown. And the beef eaters weren't even ready. You saw them standing up. All you see is blue jerseys and silver helmets going backwards. And Austin Lumley didn't even get touched. He walked into the end zone. But this is eerily similar to last week when the Fremen had that long drive. This started at their own 20-yard line. And they marched the length of the field, five, six first downs. They did it primarily on the ground. I don't think they completed a pass, 90 actually. Yards. 90 yards. And they went the full length and pounded that one in. And despite the turnovers, they're probably close to 200 yards, if not over, for the game. And you still have 18 minutes, or almost 19 minutes left in this uh, second half. Donkers and McCann doing much of the damage on the ground in that uh, drive. But I think, again, it takes that momentum away from London and certainly uh, makes the offense feel pretty good about themselves right now. And, and, if, and it gives the defense a little bit of a break too, Biddy. And if you think McCann or Donkers were upset they didn't get that touchdown, you saw them pushing that whole pile mm -hmm. forward and pushing Lumley into the end zone. They just want to score. Shot boots it to the right on the kickoff here. 
And this is number 24, Travis Ryan for the Bee Feeders. And he gets out to the 30, maybe to the 31. They'll spot it. First and 10 Bee Feeders. 3.50 to go here in quarter number three. The Fratman leading at 17 7 over the Bee Feeders. And this can be a tall task in the se second half for a converted wide receiver at quarterback for the Bee Feeders to come in and lead this team. The offense has been okay at best and it's difficult whenever you lose one of your best players and namely your pivot at quarterback and what ends up happening is it throws the rhythm of something off in this case it's clearly the passing game it's a little off right now and it makes it easy for a defense when all you got to really worry about is the run number 14 chuck wall a quick pass to the left looking for his receiver number 81 aaron stora nelson running closely with him. And this, this receiver, Stora Nelson, he is the, the body type of uh, a big Terrell Owens. Big, yeah. tall, the presence. He had a, a great game, I believe, against them last year. Had a couple scores against them in last year's contest. Uh, he is a talented receiver, but he is feeling the effects of not having many reps with his number one, excuse me, his mm -hmm. backup quarterback. He, he always have more rhythm with your number one. They list Nelson at 6'3", 210. So as Badi mentioned, just that uh, nice size receiver with some speed. Quick draw play here as Stewart does a good job breaking some tackles. He gets the first down out to about the London 45, first and 10 beef eaters. And they catch the Fratman defense thinking that it's a pass on an obvious second and long situation, and they just go inside. And you're seeing the beef eaters get right to the line of scrimmage here, upping the tempo, maybe catching the Fratman defense a little bit uh, slow to the line of scrimmage. So London trying to respond to the AKO drive. Wall, he lose a tackle. He now is flushed out, going to the left. Forced out of bounds and taken down. He does pick up four or five valuable yards. Yeah, broken play in the backfield. It all starts with the snap, and that was a high snap. The first one of the game, every once in a while, the, the center loses a little bit of grip, flips over his head. Trust me, I heard it from my quarterback the one time I shot it over his head. He still never lets me live that one down. <laughs> but the timing was thrown off a little there. But you don't want your quarterback, especially your backup, taking any extra hits, unnecessary hits, because most teams don't even carry a third option. Picks up four, so second and six for London. And 2.20 to go here in third quarter. Wall, a couple steps back, looks downfield over the middle. That pass complete! A nice pass to number 87, Christian Ridley. And the beef eaters, just like that, get into the AKO end of the field and keep the drive alive. Just over two minutes to go in quarter number three. That was a nice pass, but Neary needs to play from depth. He's the safety. He got caught flat-footed. He More times than not, the safety is able to attack that, and he was not in a good position to make a play there. First and 10, London from the AKO 30. Wall keeps it again. Wall looking for some room. Reverses. Now he turns it up field and does a good job. and. May have another London first down. This kid can scramble. Yeah, he's doing his best Tim Tebow impersonation. Uh, running around in the backfield, made a guy miss. He picks up a first down. And the beef eaters are responding right now. They're not going to say, we got a backup quarterback in. We got it stacked against us. One of our linemen left. He's not in the game either. They're not coming down to Windsor to just hand it over. They're looking like, hey, we know we can win this game despite our personnel uh, changes. Well, again, I go back to that London-Windsor rivalry, buddy. You don't look at the standings, it doesn't matter. You throw everything out when these two teams hook up. Wall looks over the middle, has a target, and doesn't connect with it. Can't quite make out who was the intended receiver there. It looks like it was Travis Ryan there, number 24, yep. So we're under a minute to go here in the third quarter. London trying to pull to within a field goal of the Fratman. And the quarterback, again, did a nice job of stepping up into the pocket, delivering a pass uh, a little bit outside the range of the receiver, but in not in any real harm's way. It's not like he threw it into traffic. It's not like he threw it up for grabs in that case. Wall being flushed out again. This time he's going to get wrapped up and taken down. A huge sack for the Fratman defense. 
And that is a big one. The Fremen defense have stepped up. And with the ball being spotted at the 26-yard line, that's going to make it a almost eight, nine-yard long, longer field goal attempt. So you're going to see the holder set up at around the 38-and-a-half, 39-yard uh, line, which, I mean, it's still a lengthy kick. Most kickers have this in the range, but you need your timing to be perfect, a little lower trajectory as well. Actually, it looks like about a 33-yard uh, attempt here, Badi. Snap is good. The kick is blocked by the Fratman. There's flags in the play. The kick is there are flags down, but the Fratman keep the beef eaters off the scoreboard. They do keep them off the scoreboard, and the, old, the reason why you see the multitude of flags is the kick crossed the line of scrimmage, and as a result of it crossing the line of scrimmage, it is like a punt, and the recovering, excuse me, the covering team needs to give the five yards, and they didn't give their five yards, and the Fratmen are going to get uh, like average field position, but once again, you said they didn't give up any points. Yep. So we got a timeout on the field here. That is the end of the third quarter. We're gonna take a timeout. When we come back, we'll get set for fourth quarter action. You're watching OFC Football on we-tv.ca. Bye. Great. My car's blocked in. I got this. Mm. Mm. I think the parking brake is on. Geez, what's in this thing, rocks? Aboriginal youth have a desire to create, learn, grow. No computer, no future. One laptop, one child at a time, one simple gesture. Give a kid a chance. Let's help give them the tools to succeed. Let's buy a child a laptop. Do yourself a favor, go online, check it out. I got a laptop! Find out how you can help. Visit the website today. Hey, welcome back to the Windsor Stadium. We're gonna run one more play, Badi, because there was a flag on the play there. So the quarter has ended, third quarter has ended, but uh, there is going to be one more play run, and then the teams will switch ends. The Fratman leading 17-7. They had just blocked a field goal attempt, a 33-yard try that was blocked, and let's see what the uh, Fratman do run here. Lumley hands off to Donkers, and Donkers picks up five or six yards. That's probably so closer to seven yards there. Okay. And they go right back to where they were. What was amounting to a great drive for the beef eaters turns out in result in a sack and then a blocked field goal from 33 yards. Then they don't get to give the yards. Five yard penalty tacked on. And now the Fratmen are going to be second down in about three yards to start the fourth quarter and in a similar situation as the last drive. In their own end, if they can mount a 98-yard drive, take seven, eight minutes, come away with any kind of points, they can almost take any wind that is in the sails of the beef eaters pretty much out if they have a long, sustained drive once again right here. All right. So the Fratman, uh, the, as, they, as mentioned, we do switch ends, and the Fratman now will start the fourth quarter uh, with a second down situation. It looks like about uh, three yards, so you were right, Badi. They, 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 they do get seven for that first play. And they'll try to keep uh, this drive going and uh, chew up some of that clock as they lead by 10. A high snap handled nicely. Here's Juma. Juma trips up on his own. He may have the first down, though, but he's going to be close. Yeah, it's going to be real close, but the way it's been going, 
Uh, they'll gonna line up in Rhino anyway and go for it if it's not. But he had a lot of grass if he didn't slip and fall. It looks like they're gonna call for the chains right now to look at it. And the referees are just questioning why the clock didn't wind in. It's still reading 15 minutes. It should have run probably, I'd say a good 14, 15 seconds off the clock because it blew in right away. So they're gonna wait to run this thing all the way down and then they'll whistle it down. And that's it, 10 seconds is run off the clock. Now they stop the clock and now they're gonna look to see if this is a first down. And that is the indication, yep. it is a first down. Got it. And good news for the Fratman, yep. uh, DeMarcus Ware is back in at the right guard so it doesn't look like a sustained injury. So their offensive yep. lineman is uh, big and back intact. Big and back intact, I like that Badi. You might wanna coin that phrase. I don't want to go through the headache of <laughs> touching the patent office or anything like that. Here's uh, McCann spinning. So the V-feeders are catching on a little bit on that trap set. That was a little early penetration. Whenever you miss a down block on trap, you end up not getting as much. But McCann was able to spin out of it and fall forward for a modest gain of about two yards. So the Fratman will have a second down situation here. It looks like they need about eight yards to keep this thing going. 14 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Play action and it looks like Lumley may have slipped a little bit there, Badi, as he tried to plant his foot. Yeah, you're absolutely right. He got to the back of his drop after the play action and he slipped, lost his footing, fell down. Uh, it looked like they were in the wrong set anyway. He had a little confusion. Austin had to get somebody out in the other position. So a big stop for the beef eaters. It still keeps them well within this game. The last thing they wanted was another long sustained drive, leaving their defense on there. So good job by the beef eaters defense. Now if they even field this kick and get a handful of yards, they should be set up in some pretty good field position to try to close this 10 point gap. Shot in the game to punt. He stands at about his 10 yard, 10 yard line. So London hoping for a good field position here. A little bit of a low line drive type of punt, punt here, I should say. And into the AKO end of the field on the return is number 31, Derek Coleman. And London with excellent field position as they will start this offensive series at the AKO 45 yard line. Yeah, and despite how good of a coverage personnel package you might have, you called it when you said it was a low line drive kick. Your coverage can't get downfield if it's not hanging in the air very long. And that was an easy return. Return man caught it in the air and was pretty much not touched for 12 yards, made a little jump step and picked up 15 total on the return. So the B-feeders looking to dig into this Fratman lead starting this offensive series with just over 13 minutes to go in the contest. They're down 10. Wall, a couple steps back. He looks to air one out. And that's going to be picked off by Neary. Seamus Neary with the turnover for the Fratman. Neary down to the left side, all the way back to the 45-yard line. AKO with a huge defensive play. And you see, this time it's a little different. Neary was playing from depth, and because he was playing from depth, he was able to aggressively attack the ball. And when you get a backup quarterback in, and you're not faulting his effort, but he doesn't have as much pop on the ball as your number one quarterback. And as you'll see on the replay, the ball just hung up a little bit. And he's throwing it, and it's up in the air for a little bit too long. And you'll see Neary go get it at the high point. And now the whole convoy, you see all the white jerseys turn, and they are all intent on trying to take this to the house. And the reality is uh, a good turnover, or a good flip of the field position for the Fratman. And as a result, they might be able to capitalize with a long drive and make them really pay for this here. Okay, there is some discussion on the uh, field uh, amongst the officials here, but yeah, I'm not sure what that's all about. I'm not sure what it was about either, but they do look like they, they are set. The six and chains are now all in place and the referee, Mr. Schroeder, has blown the play in. So it's first and 10 for the Fratman at their own 44 after the interception by Seamus Neary. 
Lumley, a couple steps back, looks a quick pass. He finds his big target there. That's number eight, Curtis Holmes. And he's filling in for uh, Tommy Howes, who last week had a great game. And that's the route that Howes last week had a number of different catches. And he's out for, with a knee injury. And I know Coach Lachance misses his presence there. But I know Coach already told me that Holmes is expecting to be a big play player here. And he's already shown a couple runs. Now he made a nice catch, moving the ball into the beef eater's end. Nice size target. They list him at six feet, 185 pounds. First and 10, Fratman at the London 50. This is gonna be Holmes again, taking the handoff, going right, sweeping right, and he picks up maybe six yards there. And they're going to the well again. They got him a reception, now we'll get him the third run of the game, and it looks like about a six yard. And they're marching it up, yep, six yards, four yards to go, and this running game has really been the key to success. Unlike last week where they had no rhythm, they are building off this run game right now and the offense is really poised and they seem ready to take that next step, even in the passing game, because it's gonna evolve eventually with time. Here you see the time to the left of your scoreboard, just over 11 minutes to go here in the fourth quarter, second and five for the Fratman. And off to Donkers. Donkers with all kinds of room. Flag on the play. Donkers down to the Flag London. The 25 forced out of bounds at the 23. But we do have a flag. Yeah, what well, was a big run and a big first down is going to come back, make it second and 14 here after a hold against the offense. Not sure what number it was, not sure what position it came from, but it was thrown from the head referee, which is usually ind indicative of uh, an offensive lineman with a hold. And you'll see the ball may have marched off in the indication right there with a hold against the offense. And it goes right back to the original line of scrimmage, walked back 10, making it second and 14. So that is a hurtful penalty to the Fratman drive. The ball comes back to the London 54, second and 20 for the Fratman. Or I should say second and 14, I apologize. There's that draw play and a flag again after the tackle was made. Yeah, Juma had his helmet ripped off and I'm not sure if that was the actual flag, but I saw his bucket come rolling off. If that is indeed the case, Regardless of the yardage, it is a first down. They have enough to get it with the 15. Mm -hmm. If that is going to be the indication, we're not sure what it is. But you said that was the draw play, but the design of that draw, if he's set to the right and it's a wrap from the right, it's supposed to work its way left. And Juma continued to the right where the blockers are actually pushing and washing their guys. So the indication is a rough play against the beef eaters, which is going to give the Fratman a big first down. A second and 14 is converted into a first down, and that's going to put the ball out around the 36-yard line going in right now. Boy, trading penalties here, Badi. Not a good thing. <laughs> Keeps the drive alive for the Fratman. Just looks like when they had put themselves in a hole with a costly penalty, London shoots themselves in the foot. And the Fratman now first and 10 at the Beef Eaters 36. 10 and a half to go here in this contest. Akil looking to increase to their lead. Lund uh, Lumley, a quick handoff to, I believe that was McCann that time, number 23. Yep, they run that inside trap again and Another three, four yard gain, positive gain. Now the time is becoming a little bit of a factor for the beef eaters. If they can stop the Fratman run game, that clock is gonna keep winding down. The Fratman, quite frankly, don't need to score. They can just go take this all the way down, five, six more minutes, and even if they don't get anything, they're gonna force London to score two touchdowns and be deep from their own end for their first drive. 9.50 counting down here. And a handoff. I'm thinking that was Donkers this time. Might have been Juma. Juma? No, actually, no, actually it's, it's a new a, number. Yeah, that's the first 20. touch of the night uh, for Lucas Allen, the number 20. Allen from Villanova and the University of Windsor. Not a very big running back, but a strong one. 
185.58 is built like a house. Another bee feeder down right now, and we've seen this over and over again. Now it looks like it's a possible cramp because the way the reaction is, he's just sort of holding his feet down. So maybe a calf cramp, a hamstring cramp, something along those lines. Nothing too serious, but you've mentioned it a few times. It's not a humid day here in uh, Windsor. This evening is everything. The conditions gorgeous. are just perfect. Robert Morey, I believe it is, uh, but the number 52 for the bee feeders being tended to there. And a point of note right now, as it looks like Shot has come out and he's preparing his leg for a field goal attempt, which is going to be probably in the ballparks of 37 yards or so. Drake Sunderland is the holder. Ah, and he held go. all last week. And if you recall in last week's broadcast, there was one field goal that was really a chip shot and it looked like it was shanked that was just after drake got hurt it was the backup holder and you really don't rep a backup holder and the ball wasn't even set properly and that's why you got a professional caliber kicker who looked like he doesn't know how to kick so i'm going to correct that from last week he has a strong leg and it wasn't his fault there was an exchange but you have the backup quarterback being the holder this week once again yeah and this is a number 14 uh, that Badi is alluding to andrew downer holding for Shots, 37 yard attempt. Kick is up and looks good. Steven Shot looking like a professional, I'll tell you. He and I did watch at practice this week. They spent quite a bit of time with the new group because you have to get the rhythm from the center and the holder. So that makes it 20 to seven for the Fratman. We gotta go down the field level. Becca has some information for us. Go ahead, Becca. Here on the sidelines of the Windsor AKO and London Beef Eaters game with a quick injury update. Early to end the first half, one of the London Beef Eaters went down, Sam Ebonga. He's been limping around behind the bench, impossible ACL injury there, so it's so it's pretty rough. As for Demarcus Ware from AKO, it was just a simple elbow injury, and he's already back in the game. That's all for down here on the field. I'm going to send it back to the booth for the rest of the quarter. Thanks a lot for the update, Becca. Yeah, you mentioned uh, DeMarcus, uh, and we have seen him back in action. But uh, London, again, much like Ottawa last week, Badi, a uh, lot of uh, bumps and bruises, uh, and some of them may be a little more serious than uh, others, but uh, certainly taking a toll. And you looked at the game last week with Ottawa, Windsor, and it looked like the Fratman kind of wore them down and eventually took uh, advantage of that. Maybe the same thing going on here. That pass deflected, but it does go complete. Uh, concentrating nicely was Aaron Sto Stora Nelson, number 81, coming up with the catch. It looked like it was tipped at the line of scrimmage, and he did keep his concentration, and he picked up about eight yards in total. And this is the one of the, alluding to the injuries you mentioned. One of the things that really hurts afterwards is you got to sit your body on a cramped bus afterwards, and you can't really get into an ice bath or anything along those lines. Ottawa felt that. They were able to recover and win today. Uh, London's going to feel a little bit of pain on that bus ride. Quick handoff to, I want to say that was Dwayne Stewart, who's been the workhorse back there for the beef eaters. He doesn't get much. Yeah, he might have lost a yard actually on the play, and that's going to bring up a third down. I'm not sure if you have to go for it here. You could try to play the field position. It's still two scores. That field goal didn't change it. It just changed the fact that you need two touchdowns. Mm -hmm. But two scores are in, and it wasn't even an option, I guess. The Fourth offense is staying on the field with a third down and three from their own 43-yard line. So the offense does stay in for the beef eaters as they feel that they need to keep this drive alive and try to chip away at that Fratman lead. We are going to get a timeout as Coach Jim Valvavitas wants to discuss it, maybe reconsidering things. Oh, uh, and I think they had him. I think that was a design play. They were trying to draw the Fratman offside. I'm a little surprised they burned the timeout. I'm shocked they didn't let just let the clock go down and take the penalty. The five yards are probably not anything compared to the time. Well, you out. might need that at the end of the later stages here, and uh, you know you, you you take that time out and 
but the beef eater center, he missed an opportunity there. It looked like number 92 for the Fratman, uh, Dalton Leno, had crept into that neutral zone. As soon as you have a sort of stall play like that and you know you're trying to draw the guy offside, as soon as he flinches, you got to snap it. He missed an opportunity to get a free first down. So the punt unit does come in for the beef eaters as they take the time out and reconsider things. This is going to be for the Fratman number 22, Josh Wright, returning the punt. And it looks like he gets to about the 40 yard line. So it's first and 10 for the Fratman with seven and a half to go. AKL leading it by 13. I would be genuinely surprised, and that's why I'm up in the booth though. I would be surprised <laughs> if you don't see two consecutive runs. Regardless yeah. of the outcome, well, I, I would be surprised given the fact <laughs> that you're up two majors still and there's seven and a half minutes left in the game, your defense is playing well, and you have a backup quarterback in for your opponent. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, the, the running game has been solid tonight, though, Badi. I, I don't think there would be any reservation for that reason alone. But aside from the fact that, yeah, they want to start chewing up some of this clock, they have enough points to win this thing. Now it's a matter of uh, just holding on to the ball. First touch of the game, I believe, for the big fella, Michael Weber, number 34. For the Fratman, he picks up about five. And this is not your typical running back. He is oh a my. large man. Oof. He has that sort of Roan Jacobs build from the NFL and the New York Giants time. And he is a large man with some track speed. 6'3", 260. Bedeen. As he goes jogging off the field now, and yeah, he's all of it. That is a running back right there. Oh my. How would you like to have that coming at you? <laughs> Second and five for the Fratman as they try to whittle, whittle away this clock. Pass is complete to Russo. Oh my, what a reception by Stefan Russo. Deep into the beef eater, eater, beef eater end of the field. A nice pass by Lumley to Russo. Again, that's why I'm up in here. Uh, I would have kept that clock going on the ground. You're going to see this replay here. Austin sets his feet. He knows who he's going to. He throws the ball. You'd still like to see him finish over on his other side, but in stride. And Russo just gets a shoot tackle here, and a Fratman are set up well in the beef eater end. And to answer your question from before, no, I would not like to see Michael Weber running at me. <laughs> just Tonin saves the touchdown, or saves the Fratman, uh, or the beef eaters from giving up a Fratman touchdown. But the Fratman, first and 10 from the London 20, they go to the end zone again here with the pass, and touchdown, AKO! Flags on the play after, but... Uh, We'll wait the call here, but I'm not sure who came down with that ball, Bede, but Lumley put it up in the corner, almost like a toss-up, and it was the AKO Fratman receiver hauling it in. Yeah, my guess is it's Demetrius Ka, number 18, because they've repped that all week. Uh, any practice I've been here, uh, the big number 18, Demetrius Ka, goes up for the ball, and he... He usually came down with it in practice, and there's the evidence of it. You get a big, tall receiver, try to use him sort of like Randy Moss was used all those times. Throw it up to him, let him make a play, and despite the flags, the, the touchdown is good, but the indication is you have uh, a rough play against the Fratman, and that's going to be on the ensuing kickoff, so they'll have to kick the ball off from well in their own end. Demetrius Ka, though, is the uh, man that uh, hauls in that Lumley pass. Two big plays, and just like that, it's in the end zone. Shots point after, it's up, and it's through. That makes it Windsor AKO 27, and London 7-5, 28 to go. Badia, look at the touchdown. And we'll see it here. It is straight design. He is looking at one receiver and one receiver only. Throw the ball to the back cone and let your receiver go get it in a dogfight. And notice how much taller he is. He gets his hands away from his body, catches it with his hands, controls the ball through the process, keeps his feet in, and there's the major. And then there was a flag on the extra point. We're not sure what that is going to be, but it's being sent over, or the referee's going over to the Fratman bench, and I'm not sure if they're just going to have a player go off for a few plays just to cool him down a little bit. But Jay Schroeder's talking to Mike LaChance right now. You don't want to lose, and you can see how uh, upset it seems that Mike is with it through his body language. There was a some sort of incident that cost the Fratman something, 
and it's been a flag filled game right now and really you don't want to you don't want to see that uh, a lot of them are warranted that's why there's, another, there's another flag, flag. Oh, and wow. my guess is coach Ashant's had another one too many field. things to say and that's going to probably they're going to end up having a kick from their own 10 yard line here <laughs> you got a personal foul against the fratman and that's 15 from before 15 afterwards and now you're going to get an objectionable conduct and he's indicating fratman again fratman. Of course he was so you had two uh, unnecessary roughness one from before the touchdown or during the touchdown against the fratman then you got one against the beef eaters on the kickoff or on the kick and now objectionable conduct so you're going to get this walk back 10 yards and they're going to have to kick from their own 35 yard line now uh, no, it'll be beyond that, actually, Badi, because there's the two penalties. Looks like they're going to... Okay, where where is the official going? All right, so let's give you a full summary again here. <laughs> he's, just, he's, just to make sure, here's what it was. There looks like there has been an ejection from the game. Yep. It looks like a player has been kicked off. We're not sure what the number is and who it is. They're kicking off from the two-yard line, Billy. Yeah, yeah. So what's going to happen is you get the, the major foul, and then you get the ejection penalty, which totals 25 yards, and then you get the objectionable conduct against the bench, which is another 10 yards, and you march all of them off, and then at some point in time, you run out of space. <laughs> and that space, as it turns out, man, is man, the two-yard line. Give, give, kneel down and give him the point. <laughs> I, I, that's not even an option. You know, can't. It's not a punt. This isn't a scrimmage play. So uh, I, you, you simply have this to. This is a first for me. I have to tell you, all my years of doing this stuff, this is a first for me. I have never seen a kickoff from the two-yard line. Yeah, they might as well just put it out at Tecumseh Road. But yeah, they should. I mean, right now, they're in the backyard of Kennedy. Mm -hmm. Needless to say, London will have pretty good field position, Biddy. Yeah, and that was Grondon who kicked off, not shot, just for the record. And indeed, London will start this offensive series from the AKO 35-yard line. 5.22 to go in the contest. AKO with a 20-point cushion. Now, I'd be interested to know who was ejected. That ejection is going to come with an automatic suspension next week. Yep. And I was just looking to see if anyone was walking off or away from the Fratman bench. But uh, that is a, a concern moving forward if indeed that is the First indication. Down First down, Beaties, Beef Eaters at the AKO 35. They need a lot of offense in a hurry as they're down 20 points with just over five minutes to go. Wall is going to put the ball up, and that pass behind the intended receiver, ball number 87, pass. Christian Ridley. And at this point in time, you, you're up by 20. There's five minutes left. I, I know you're not thinking you're going to lose, but you never want to give a team a chance to get a quick score. No, I, I think crazy you know, things can happen. I, I agree with you, but you, you, you play the full 60 minutes. You know, I was always taught by my coaches, no matter what the score is, you play the full contest. You play until that time has expired, and uh, I think that's the case here. You don't want to embarrass or, or show up the London team, but you want to continue to play hard. Second and 10. And a quick handoff, this time to Dwayne Stewart. And he's going to be short of the first down, but no doubt uh, the offense will stay in, being down 20 points with four and a half to go in the contest. Ah, nice tackle by number 90, a backup defensive lineman, Larry Blocker, came in and he was able to wrap up the running back. Stewart's a big load, and by eight, taking him on low, he was able to trip him up and bring him down for a very nominal gain. So it's a third down and nine situation for the bee feeders. Fratman would like to take the ball back right here, right now. Wall rolls right, looks downfield, gets the pass off, and it's complete. A nice job there by Wall as he finds his target, Lee Purnell, his first touch of the game. Yeah, good uh, design. The offensive lineman slides their protection a little bit. Uh, quarterback's able to sprint out. He sets his feet, and the receiver runs a nice little comeback route. Uh, gets to the sticks, of course, and gives them a first down. 
Again, a quick handoff. That play just has not fooled the Fratman, but he, uh, Stewart really has to fight for anything he can get there. But uh, AKO has read that play very well this evening. Yeah, and this is Colin Lesperance, number 96, who got the initial penetration and uh, slowed down Stewart just enough that they're forcing the running back to change direction in the backfield, and a big back like that doesn't want to change directions. Second and 10 as Stewart got back to the line of scrimmage. Ball at the AKO, 21. Under three minutes to go, or are we, we're gonna get London. a timeout. I don't know if that was London, they said London over the PA here, but I believe it was AKO calling the timeout. Yeah, I'm not sure where that came from. Part of the, it's, it's weird to say this, and I'm not making uh, anything up. You just, when the, both teams are on the same side, a lot of the times when you're indicating penalties, you notice what side they're on and you point to that side. However, that's not how a penalty is indicated. It's indicated on which direction you are on the field. And it's it just been a little bit confusing, but so far there have been a number of penalties and the Fratman at this point in time have really, really shot themselves in the foot with their penalties and against a team that is of top caliber and firing on all cylinders. Early on in this game, London lost a lot of players and they're not firing on all cylinders. In the end, against a good team, you lose this game because of the number of turnovers you, turnovers you had and the lack of discipline. So they did change it on the clock. Uh, it's gonna be second and eight now for the bee feeders uh, as the timeout has been completed. 2.46 to go here. Wall. Three receivers to the right. He looks right, goes towards the right side. He finds a target. And London looks like they have enough Eight yards seven, there. Eight yes, seven, they do uh, for the... Ridley was the uh, receiver there. They spot it right at the 10-yard line. So that should be enough for the first down for the bee feeders. Yeah, and it looks like two fragmen may have run into each other, and that's Grandin and Nicoletti, and you don't want those guys who are valuable members of your team. You don't want them going down like that, so. First report we have, Badi, for the ejection was Steven shot for a headbutt. And that that's why injection. Grondin was and kicking on the Grondin ensuing kicked, kickoff. So that makes sense. Becca Luden digging that up for us. Wow. Which that means they're going to lose him next week. Now, not to take anything for granted, at the very least, their opponent is yeah. someone you would hope well, they might paper, not have think to that's rely a winnable on the kicker. Game. Yeah. But that's not going to sit well with Coach Lachance. No, not at all. And not in as a player too, you don't want to let your teammates mm -hmm. down. You know your role on the team, and you know you have a vital role. Kicking is important in this uh, mm -hmm. game, and ultimately if you put yourself in a position where you can't help your team, you always feel bad. Second and six here for the B-feeders. Wall pumps, now he tucks it under. He's gonna go for a run. Wall trying to get to the end zone. Touchdown, London! A nice effort there by the quarterback, number 14, Chuck Wall as he punches it in for six. Yeah, nice scramble there, nice athletic play. He looked, he didn't want to force anything because if you do make a turnover in there, you can absolutely end the game at that point. He gave his team some life, he scrambled out to the right, didn't like what he saw, was able to keep his composure, wiggle his way through the force unit and found his way for a touchdown. And the beef eaters are still in this. I remember being here a couple years ago where the beef eaters were down significantly early in the game and they ended up being in a, a fortunate situation that they hung around and they won the game at the end. Here's a look at the uh, touchdown. Uh, London now with 14 points on the game. Wall again looks, pumps, and then he's just looking for some room. And yeah, you saw that, the scramble there, and like you said, he pump faked and he held the guy and he didn't want to force anything in. So good on him to keep your team in the game. Really 
So 159 to go in this one. Uh, there's been a little bit of everything tonight, Buddy. I mean, there's been some good offensive execution by the Fratman, but then there's been some plays where you kind of scratch your head a little bit. Defensively, I think the Fratman have been very solid again here this evening. Um, and if you're London, you, you kind of take some good things out of this game, but also they've shot themselves in the foot, and to Hill's credit, they've made them pay for it. All in all, a pretty entertaining game of football, and it uh, looks like right now, anyways, with just under two minutes to go, that AKO is going to improve to 2-1. and one. London will fall to 1-2. and two. And you can expect the Fratman to have hands personnel on the field, and it does look like that. They have all specialty players up in the front line. You're going to see probably a, a either a squib, a hard driving ball that might take a bounce, or a high moon shot. It looks like it's working to the sideline where the players are and as you can see the ball is already angled in that direction the kicker is setting himself up for a some sort of pooch punt and again we have a little bit of a confrontation there with referee Jay Schroeder but yeah you can see where the ball is set up and yeah. AKO playing all sending a lot of the players right to the midfield stripe and it looks like the kicker Carmen Gentile he's all set to try to give his team uh, a quick possession right back with two minutes left I, again if they recover this and get a quick score you never know what can happen you've let a team hang around you've made way too many mistakes and the penalties are costing you if you do recover this hopefully you can kill the clock on the ground well here we go and there it is a little chip shot to the far side of us and, and it was actually mishandled I believe that was 25 donkers who the ball got into his chest fortunately Thank for him the and the entire front and sideline that took just a dead bounce and he was able to fall on it and if you are the beef eaters there you didn't want that ball to go as many yards as it did it, it sailed probably a good 20 22 yards in the air and your coverage can't get to it you probably only want that thing to go about 15 yards mm -hmm. you want it more to the sideline where mm -hmm. in canada it's the last team to touch it you don't have to recover it if a receiver could bat it out of bounds it would have been the beef eater ball there but as you see in this screen there the offensive line are marching the unit out and this time i'm pretty confident the ball is going to be on the ground I would bet on that as well, Buddy, and indeed it is on the ground. That was a first and 10 situation from the AKO 47. Maybe a yard there picked up. And it does look like they made a couple changes on the offensive line. Uh, it looked like they've taken out actually three offensive linemen. Left guard, the center, and the right tackle are all on the sideline right now. And they try that inside trap here with Darubis. And they, of course, London is sitting inside. It's tough if you're a backup. You come in and you try to get your carry in. You got seven, eight men, nine men in the box. That was the case. London's sitting on the run. This clock just winds down. And the Fratmen are content with running 20 more seconds off this clock if they can kick it away and hope that their defense can get a quick stop and they can take some knees and get out of yep. here. So the punt team comes in for Coach LaChance as, again, Steven Schott was ejected from the game earlier on, so doing the punting duties is Dylan Grondin, number 54. And, and he does he, a good job. Yeah, and he punted for them last year, so it's not like he got somebody completely new. He has some experience at this level. As you see a flag being thrown, yeah, looks like uh, a block in the rear, yeah. the and play. the ball is going to be marched back from that spot, so you're going to see the beef eaters set up inside their own 20-yard line. Yeah, just over a minute to go now in this one. We'll await the call. Referee Jay Schroeder consults with Brent Webster. Block in the back against London. First down and you are correct, sir. That was the call, and you picked it out. I saw you pointing right away. It was a pretty obvious call. <laughs> Even these old eyes can pick that one up, for the <laughs> Looking forward, at least the Fratman did something that they needed to do. They stayed on tune at home. You want to defend your home field. You want to steal a couple on the road. And they've already now, it looks like they're on their way to their second home victory. 
maybe take one next week, win three in a row, put yourself in a situation where you can contend for not only home field advantage for a first round, but maybe the entirety of the playoffs. Yeah, they, they have Hamilton coming here in a couple of weeks. Of course, we'll have that for you here on we-tv.ca. The Hurricanes losing earlier today, so that will be a very important game if things go to, according to status quo here, Badi. Uh, that's what the Fratman, of course, going to GTA next week and winning against the Grizzlies. And again, you don't take anything for granted. You take their record and throw it out. So they will make improvements. They will make adjustments. Uh, it will not be an easy game, but uh, if the Fratman are successful, then they come back with uh, Hamilton. And that could be, as you alluded to, maybe a battle for first place. 100%. And you'll see the quarterback throw here. And uh, it's a tough. In Canada, you're, you got a, such a long throw to the outside there. And he was trying to get Stora Nelson again, his big receiver. And hey, you want to think player at this point in time. He is their most explosive receiver they have on their roster right now. You can't blame him for taking a shot there. But the coach looks like he's going to send out his uh, punting unit here. I'm not expecting any kind of fake or any no. kind of trickery here. No. But with 45 seconds left, it's probably a good time to get some extra practice in, get your coverage unit in. Yeah, The, the time is obviously the factor. It doesn't look like you're going to have enough time to come back despite the fact that you'd always want to play four quarters. As mentioned, AK will be at uh, GTA next week. They come home on the 20th against Hamilton. They finish their home schedule the following week on the 27th against the Burlington Braves. Then it's on the road for their last two games, a return match with this London Beefeater team, and they close out their schedule October 18th against the Tri-City Predators. So they do have another buy in there, Badi. Uh, after their September 27th game, they'll have a week off uh, to prepare for their last two road games. So they truly do control their own destiny here. You have a no yards here indicated. It's probably going to be the 15-yard march off because uh, Josh Wright caught the ball in the air and number 40, the Kennedy product, uh, Wasim Gozile, he was able to make the tackle, but he infringed on the five-yard neutral zone. The Fratman with 34 seconds left. They got a few backups in. You, you might see a simple run just to give some of these other guys a chance to carry the ball. And the game is pretty much over. And that is indeed what's happening. Lumley, a pitch to the big fellow we saw him earlier in the game, Michael Weber. He turns it upfield to the left. Or heading right, then turning up left. And as that was demonstrated on the field, he does have some speed. You have a big man who just outraced people to the corner, and he picked up a full first 10 down. yards and yep. got the first down. First down you down. would not expect somebody that large to have that kind of just flat-out speed, but he indeed does. Obviously a very talented young man there, Michael Weber. Under... 20 seconds to go here as the clock winds down. This is going to be Weber again. This time he goes left and he's wrapped up immediately. And another Beefeater player shaken up. Anybody that gets run over by Weber is going to feel it. That's for sure. Yeah, and he still hasn't evolved into that running back who delivers that downhill square shoulder blow. When he does learn how to be a power back to complement the speed he has, Wow, and I remember coaching back here at AKO some years back when Nick Romain was here, and he evolved into that guy who I can outrace people as you hear the horn to end the game, so this is the last play of the game. Just an inside run here, and, I mean, just make the tackle. The game's over, and the Fratmen do win. The Fratmen are successful here as Lucas Allen, with the last carry of the contest, finishes it off. The final score, the Windsor AKO Fratmen, 27 the London Beefeaters 14. The Fratman improved to 2 and 1. The Beefeaters now 1 and 2. But, D, your final thoughts on the game? I, I don't know if there was anything where we could say there was a turning point. I just think maybe, uh, you know, the consistency, uh, the con constant, uh, 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 I guess, play of the Fratman, maybe the difference in this contest here tonight. The well, defense, the positive I thought, for was the, the most consistent. Yeah, the positive for the Fratman was the consistent play of the offensive line in the mm -hmm. run game, and it was a dynamic run game. They had several different ball carriers. I think they ended up having six people carry the ball, seven people carry the ball. They, I, I'm guessing it clearly over 200 yards, a number of first downs on the ground, so that's a positive. 
the negative from the offensive perspective is the fact that they turn the ball over too many times. You cannot win a conference championship turning the ball over that many times. And I know Coach LaChance, I know Coach Morenci. They're going to address that. They're going to do ball security drills. They're going to do just reaction drills to ensure that those kind of mistakes are limited in the future. And then as an overall team perspective, the one thing that stood out as a positive is the fact that they were physical again in all facets, and that is a trademark of the Fratman. However, the negative is that lack of discipline, a lot of yeah. penalties on the Fratman as a uh, team. Including an ejection tonight, Badi, which uh, is concerning, that's for sure. So the uh, two teams shaking hands and uh, gonna call it a night, Badi. As always, your uh, expertise and knowledge is uh, such a valuable asset uh, for our broadcast. Certainly appreciate your uh, wonderful effort here tonight. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks when the Hamilton Hurricanes come in town, but uh, your part is done for the evening. Have a great night. Thank you very much. All right, and when we do come back to the Windsor Stadium, we'll get into our post-game report. Becca Luden will be busy down in the uh, field uh, getting some reaction from the players and the coaches, and we'll also have our OFC in uh, studio analysts, Joel Manerick and Adam Morrison, uh, giving us their thoughts on the uh, game here this evening. Once again, the AKO Fratman win it 27-14 over London. You're watching OFC Football on We dash tv dot ca More than 13 million volunteers contribute over 2 billion hours every year. Volunteers support us in everything we do, and communities thrive because of it. At Volunteer Canada, we encourage and strengthen community involvement. We work with a broad range of partners to promote and support our shared vision of a vibrant Canada. To learn more, visit the new volunteer.ca, your connection to Canada's volunteers. Welcome back to Windsor Stadium where the AKL Fratman have just earned their second win of the season with a 27-14 victory over the London Beefeaters. I'm here with quarterback Austin Lumley. So you finally kind of got into the swing of things looking like yourself after the first two games. So how does that feel for you? Um, feels good. I mean, you want to get into the swing of things on the very first game, but that's not the case. I mean, we got the big boys up front helping us out, bailing us out on this game. But uh, in the end, we're just looking for the win. So that's all we really came to do, and that's what we got done. So after last week's win over Ottawa, the end of that fourth quarter, you started to look like yourself then. Do you think the end of that game kind of helped you transition into this one this week? Uh, yeah, like I said before, I mean, the intensity, once it's there, I really have no choice. So I just got to play to what I need to do to get the win. All right, thanks. Have a great night. Congratulations on the win. <laughs> Where is head coach? We're going to have coach, head coach Mike Lachance up next. Coach. Take one empty field, round up a group of players, add three bases, plus one home plate, throw in a softball, and add an umpire. Play ball! It's not hard to get a game of softball going and to keep it going from the time you're four till you're 84. Softball, get in the game. Welcome back to Windsor Stadium where the AKO Fratman have just earned their second straight win. I'm here with head coach Mike Lachance. So not as ugly as last week. So how does that feel for you? It feels good. I'm smiling. I mean, a win's a win all the time, but certain ones feel better than others. It got a little chippy at times. There was a lot of penalties. I'd never seen a team kick off from the five-yard line, but we managed to do that at the end of the game. Some questionable things being called, but you know what? It is what it is, and you live with it and live for the next day. And we played well enough to win and against a good team. We're proud of it. 
Now next week you're on the road again to play GTA. So what do you think you have to improve on for next week on the road? You know what, defensively we might have to tackle a little bit better. GTA is going to run the football, and if you miss tackles against them, you're going to give up unnecessary first downs. Offensively, we just have to build on what we did. I mean, we played better today than we did last week. So I think we're getting better every week. Austin's kind of finding his groove, and our personality as a team is to run the football, and we did a good job at that today. Now we also just spoke to Austin Lumley, and he is getting back into the groove, like he said. Started off a little rough for him as well. <laughs> So how happy are you that he's finally looking like Austin Lumley again? Well, you, you know what? He's a second-half kid. I mean, I wish we had six quarters because the first two, two you could throw away and then he'd play four. But he'll get there. He's young. And uh, the more we run the ball, the easier it is for any quarterback. And he's no different. So we ran the ball well today. He felt comfortable and looked good. Now London had several injuries. Um, do you think that affected their game at all and helped you guys a little bit? Yeah, you know what? It didn't help us because the, the injuries slow the game down. And we like to play at a little bit more of a high tempo. And every time it seemed we got a first down, they had a guy hurt. There was an unnecessary stoppage of play. Last week, Ottawa did it. I don't know if it's just coincidence or happenstance. I, I have no idea, but it, it's frustrating because there was like 17 or 20 timeouts today that shouldn't have been. All right, thank you. Congratulations on your second win, and good luck next week as well. Yeah, thanks. That's everything from down here on the field, so we'll send it back to the guys in the studio. Thanks a lot, Becca, and uh, congratulations to Coach Mike Lachance and the Akil Fratman. They win here uh, this evening, 27-14. Joel Manerick, Adam Morrison, uh, our OFC uh, football analyst, uh, continuing on with our post-game report. And, you know, this was, I don't know, it's, it's a good win. A win's a win, uh, as Coach Lachance says. You take the wins. But uh, I still think there were some things that uh, uh, have to be addressed. Uh, there were, at times, good good uh, continued play by the Fratman, but also some shoddy play at times. And um, how would you guys evaluate this game? Where would you put this game, Joe? Well, on a one, like, to, one like to ten said, scale. Uh, you know, one to, one to ten, it's probably a six. Yeah. You, know, you got the win. That's that's the five. You did some good things. I can pump you up to a six. Uh, but there's some things, you know, on the disciplinary side. You know, you got a player that is kicked out. You got a guy that intercepted the ball, runs to the stands, and throws the ball mm -hmm. in the stands. Never got the penalty for it. No. But those things can. Shame is near you're talking. Yeah, about. and those things can happen in a, especially in a tight football game if you want to win a championship. Yeah. Where would you evaluate this one, Adam? I'd probably be sitting in the same there. Probably you might even uh, put that in a, into a five, um, five out of ten. You know, if we're taking a look at it from a game, you know, there was two teams that have a lot of potential that probably both didn't play up to where they should have. Um, you can kind of see the bouncing, the bad play bouncing back and forth. But uh, mm -hmm. you know, they did, they did, they did pull out the win. Mm -hmm. So. You know, maybe we'll bump it up to a six, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I thought the one impressive part of the game, uh, we were talking a little bit uh, here during the commercial break, but the offensive line. Uh, here, here we saw some real consistent play by the offensive line, and they opened up some huge holes for the uh, backs. Uh, you know, McCann, of course, took advantage of it. Juma had a couple of uh, nice runs here as well. Uh, Donkers, uh, again, uh, fought for some good yards, but they had some nice holes to run through. And the offensive line, I think, really needs to get some props tonight. Oh, absolutely. They did a great job, especially mm -hmm. in, in the run game. Uh, they did a fairly good job in the, in the pass protection. They don't think they only gave up one sack in the game, and that was in the second half. Uh, so all in all, they, they had a very solid game, and they had five or six different rushers that, that gained some significant yards, so that's good to see. The defensive uh, line, the defensive side of the ball for the Fratman, again, I thought a pretty solid outing. There was a, obviously a couple of things uh, that uh, I don't know if Coach Schwanz has to panic or be overly concerned about, but but overall, I think it's the defensive side. And, Joe, you mentioned earlier in the broadcast that the defensive, us defensive side usually has the edge early on in the season, and I think right now it is fair to say that the defensive side of the team is, is really the strength of the club right now. Oh, ab absolutely is. Um, and you can see it from the, you know, the push from the D-line. The linebacker play was pretty stellar today. Um, I think you're going to find that group, uh, again, as although defense has the edge, I think, uh, coming off early, there's a lot more plays and integration to learn with the offense. But uh, I, th I think this defense has got a little bit more in it as well. Mm -hmm. So let's, uh, let's expect to see some more pressure, some new ideas in the next couple weeks coming ahead. Okay, we, we can't not uh, address what happened with Steven Schott, the kicker. And you, again, you guys have alluded to it a little bit. Uh, the ejection of the game, Steven Schott. This guy is a big part of this team. He's a kicker, but he's a professional kicker. And... Uh, you know, uh, you expect uh, discipline, you expect uh, good concentration, you expect him to be a part of the team for the full 60 minutes. He gets ejected in this game. Uh, how do you address that if you're Coach Lachance? Well, it's tough. I think he's, I don't know if Mike has actually saw what he did. It was a headbutt. Mm -hmm. He headbutted uh, the opposing player, and that's what he got kicked out for. So I'm not sure if, if Mike actually knew 
and, and saw it, but I think once he I'm sees sure it, he'll, he'll learn about absolutely. it. Absolutely, once he sees it, then he'll you know he'll dress it to him one on one and as a, as a team as well. Disappointing though to see that. Absolutely disappointing, especially yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm not 100 percent sure, but I believe in this league it may affect him going forward. Uh, there could be an issue with uh, with another game. Oh, he'll uh, be suspended. There yeah, will be exactly. A suspension so there, Adam. you know, going forward, is it uh, you know that's something that's a real selfish play. I mean, it's not just today. It's and it was also after a made field goal. It's not mm -hmm. that there should be the irritation if, there's, if there was a miss. So I think there's some. Uh, some serious coaching and some serious, uh, you know, checks that have to checkpoints that need to be in place for Shaw right now. And we'll see. I mean, uh, we'll see what the league says about it. And uh, it's unfortunate, but uh, certainly need Stephen Shaw back in that AKO lineup for sure. He's got a great leg and uh, he's a veteran guy, brings some pro experience to him. And so uh, he needs to be there. Uh, moving forward now, uh, the Fratman, a, a big win again. You look at uh, down the road, they'll meet London one more time before the season's out. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. But, you know, you look at the remainder of their schedule. They're two and one now. Go on the road against GTA next week. Again, you don't take anything for granted, but GTA out of the gate slow. They haven't won, won a game yet. Uh, it's a program that really isn't in the upper echelon of the OFC. It's a winnable game for the Fratman. If they can come back after that 3 and one, they have Hamilton back here on the 20th, which really sets up a huge showdown. Uh, for Coach LaShance going to the GTA, what should they expect? Well, they're going to see a very unconventional offense in, in the GTA when they're going to run the double wing. Yep. Uh, so being disciplined, we talked about a little bit earlier, they need to be disciplined when they when they see that offense. Everyone has their assigned responsibilities, and they have to carry out their responsibilities. If they don't, that's when a ball or a guy with the ball scoots through the holes and, and then creates some offense for the opposing team. So uh, them coming, playing disciplined, gap control, and understanding their responsibilities. Final comment, Adam? Well, I'm going to have to agree with Joe. I mean, you're going to see an offense that uh, is not atypical of football anymore. <laughs> you wouldn't see that too much. But uh, I got to think they have to understand they're going to watch the film. They're going to see some nuances, some uh, some uh, things that they're going to tip off, but to not change everything that they do. Um, you know, again, they haven't seen it before. We all haven't seen that defense or the offense in a long time. But again, their defense is, uh, is pretty sound. So a couple of adjustments here and there, but we should see if we're having a win next week. All right. Good stuff, guys. As always, Joe, Adam, do guys, guys do a great job for us. We really appreciate your help and your uh, knowledge of uh, football, that's for sure. So that's the story here at the Windsor Stadium. The AKO Fratman improved to two and one. The London Bee Feeders fall to one and two. The Fratman victorious here tonight, 27-14. They'll move on to the GTA Grizzlies next weekend on the road at one o'clock start there. The Fratman return home in a couple of weeks, uh, right back here at the Windsor Stadium. We will have that game for you here at uh, we-tv.ca. The Hamilton Hurricanes will be the opponent on September 20th, kickoff at 7 p.m. We'll have the pregame show with uh, Joe and Adam and yours truly uh, starting at 6.30. Hope you can join us for that. So that is the story. On behalf of everybody here at we-tv.ca, this is Dominic Papa wishing you a great night. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you all again very soon.